Hello, I'm Robbie Sherman, and I'm personally inviting you to join me on Conversations with Robbie Sherman. We go through a new niche topic every episode with one of my very special friends who always have something cool to contribute. We go through movies, we go through video games sometimes, we go through animation very specifically. I love animation. Now, I must admit the podcast is a little bit of a vanity project, but I hope you'll understand me when I say that I am more than excited to show you all the cool people we're working with. We have two subcasts coming out as well as regular episodes of Conversation with Robbie Sherman. If you're into 90s animation, there will be one on the twisted tales of Felix the Cat. And to celebrate the announcement of the upcoming community movie, I am proud to present Conversations About Community with Robbie Sherman. I am finally throwing my hat into the community podcasting ring after so long, and it will be glorious. We have so many cool people coming on. Right now, I can only announce that you can't disappoint a podcast and Kevin Lanigan will be involved. But I have a few tricks up my sleeve, either way. And I can't forget about the upcoming Freak Out Freakazoid podcast featuring Thomas Stoneham Judge, Ash to Ashes, and our lovely friends, Mr. Ray and Trent from A Nightmare on Fear Street. You can find conversations with Robbie Sherman on Anchor. Please look us up. We have such an incredible year coming up. I can't wait to make you a part of it. A poignant account of a relationship story. Holly Amber Webb's debut poetry book, Am I the Villain?, is an epic in three acts, a consuming portrayal of grief in all its honesty. The poetry spares no detail, and just when it seems the darkness will stretch on forever, the light appears, spring comes, your worth is realized, and life feels good once again. It's up to you, dear reader, to determine her fate. Is she the villain in this story? You can find this book on Amazon or Goodreads under her author profiles or on her social medias. Exclusively on Amazon, Am I the Villain by Holly Amber Webb. Well, Stephen, we're here. We're almost done with community. I didn't think we'd ever make it, but we made it. And I think, how about just for old time's sake, we record an intro to the podcast just one more time. Let's do it, Zach. I think we can handle it. If you like what we do here, make sure you mosey on over to patreon.com slash podcast for as little as five bucks a month. You too can feed a Zach and Steven in need and you'll get access to all sorts of awesome content. Our weekly live pre-show that we do, You Can't Dis a Pre-Show. We've got some bonus podcasts on there. Days and days, just scads of content over there for you. Plus maybe some new stuff coming soon. So make sure you put your ear to the ground, send us your bones, throw us at least a fiver and see what it'll get you. Follow us on Twitter over at You Can't Dis a Pod. It's very important because starting October 18th, we'll have the week long poll that decides between the four shows we've chosen for our next full rewatch podcast. So follow us on Twitter. Make sure you're a part of that poll and tell us what show we should talk about next. If you just can't get enough, watch those patties and come over and double tap us on Instagram over at Can't Disappoint Podcast. We're also on Facebook and YouTube under the whole name of the show, You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. All sorts of vids, things to like, subscribe, and and slap the bell to get notified. After we finish the series finale of Community, we'll still be a weekly community podcast for the rest of 2022 as we conduct a series of community superlative podcasts where we'll be creating top five lists on several different community-related topics. Follow us on all our social medias to see how you can be a part of those final podcast episodes. Speaking of five, if you think that we're both five-star men and this is a five-star show, make sure you leave a review wherever you review your podcasts on Apple Music, on Yelp, on Spotify, on TripAdvisor. We're there. Just check us out. Everyone, it has been an honor to do this community rewatch podcast for the past few years, and I hope you'll stick around with us as we wrap it up and move on to the next thing. Steven, what do you have to say as we move onward and upward? Thanks for sticking with us as long as you have. We hope that you hitch your get-alongs to our pick-em-up and ride along with us into whatever the future holds. 
All right, and for one of the last times, let's do it. Let's start the episode of You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. Okay. There is skill to it. More importantly, it has to be joyful, effortless, fun. TV defeats its own purpose when it's pushing an agenda or trying to defeat other TV or being proud or ashamed of itself for existing. It's TV. It's comfort. It's a friend you've known so well and for so long. You just let it be with you. And it needs to be okay for it to have a bad day or phone in a day. And it needs to be okay for it to get on a boat with LeVar Burton and never come back. Because eventually it all will. Gather all ye nipple dippers, far and wide. My nipples are dipped, ripped, and ready to flip. I couldn't think of another rhyme right away. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. It's a a momentous occasion, isn't it? It is monumental. This is the the uh, one of the seven wonders of our world, Zach. <laughs> yeah, uh, when people go back and remember 2022, it's going to be first the you can't disappoint a podcast community finale. Yeah. Uh, maybe 12 more down because the rest are like broke back bebop episodes uh-huh. down from that. It would be like the Oscars slap and I don't know something that the president did or something. Yeah. But it's Zach and Steven. And then Betty White passing away. Then like 18 yeah. more. Then the queen died. Yeah. Those uh, teenagers that threw soup at a Van Gogh painting. That'll be on there somewhere. Did you see oh, about shit. that? Yeah. Did you see? Yeah. The, did you see how like, I don't know. So there were so many pictures of it and videos of it happening. Uh-huh. And there's like this video. So the girl, this is what a way to start off our last podcast. If you, <laughs> you guys probably have heard about the story. These girls were like protesting oil so they threw (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know it's made of oil that paint fuck that guy (laughs) so they threw soup at a van gogh painting these like two uh uh angsty i'm not gonna assume genders but Mm -hmm. like teenagers um and the video they like do that and then they dramatically take like glue out of their shirts and start like gluing themselves to the wall and in the picture there's like (laughs) 25 photographers as they're like defacing yeah. this painting. So like why at what point is this no longer a protest and it's just a, a theatrical expression? There were twenty five yeah. paparazzo there. Truly. Like it wasn't like a oh my gosh, someone stopped them. It was like, ooh, is this like part imagine of the tour? if every <laughs> time Gandhi did a hunger strike, he took to his <laughs> Instagram live. <laughs> That's right, guys. You've been right here with me. Day four. Haven't eaten. Not a goddamn crumb. Uh, make sure you guys go over and cash app at Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, <laughs> XOXO. <laughs> Patreon.com slash HungryBoy1895. I don't know when Running he was a special alive. on my OnlyFans. Right? 10 days for two ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, boy. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so tremendously excited. Welcome to You Can't Disappoint a Podcast this week brought to you by Conversations with Robbie Sherman. That's new, isn't it? Someone gave us money to say their name. That is new. So that's cool. Thanks for Hell of a bringing time to start, the Rob, show right to the, the people. <laughs> it's on Robbie's shoulders to etch this podcast onto the tablets. This show is brought to you by, so he has brought it he has to hand deliver it to each of our listeners mailbox yeah. so thanks for that conversations with robbie sherman check it out and because it was not expressly stated that means that the views of this podcast do reflect those of conversations yeah. with robbie sherman absolutely yeah the the views and opinions expressed here after do reflect everything he's brought it to you so we can say fucking paid for and approved anything. by and robbie when he's running for president this will still be mm-hmm. like on the things of on the list of things that he's thumbs up throughout his career. Well, I'm going to send this to his opponents. They're going to know. <laughs> it's great. Hi, publicity. everybody. Welcome to You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. I'm Zach and I'm legit gay. Uh, I'm Steven and you are actually stealing my rays, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
Of course, we've got to start off this podcast like we do every week by shouting out our $10 and up patrons over at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. Those people are Conversations with Robbie Sherman, Brendan Folkemer, Hey yo. Emmy Azrael. Hey yo. Who, uh, I got to update that they know they didn't get divorced or married. Uh, I think they just okay. changed it either to or from their middle name. Ah. So there you go. Uh, Plains Walker Prez. Congrats. Pre- oh, hey yo. Brian Thurman. Hey yo. Truly early, I, early I'm doctor. almost willing to say if Communities is the papa of the podcast, Brian's kind of, even though your literal mom is next on the list, I think I have a feeling mm-hmm. that Brian's kind of the 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 mom of the show. Well, is Brian the mom or like our best friend next door neighbor? I don't know. She did call us. She said she felt like our mom in a tweet recently. Okay, well then mom. Unless she's one of those like best friend neighbors that has like this I want to be your fucking mom kind of thing going on. Yeah, I get, I like think? that. I'm into that Any action. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. I've seen a couple okay, of I think those. It's that. Yeah. Alternatively, we've got Mary Baker Budisa. <laughs> Truly a day one hey, of, on the show. of Steven's life supporter. Yeah. She's been there. Before Steven's I can life count was, a, was a a day negative three two hundred or whatever supporter. Yeah, however many of those. What's nine months? Like one hundred eighty, around two hundred. She she was a little bit later to the Zach Pruitt train, but come on, it's a, I, yeah. I, I I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> I, I take a little bit of exactly. time to shine on just about anyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he's comfortable with you, he's a sweetheart. He's no, it gets worse. It, it truly gets worse. <laughs> the, the more comfortable I am, the more unhinged around you I am. And finally, <laughs> of course, we love her. You know her, Danny M. Lugo, rounding out the patrons. Thank you. So I guess we should we'll shout out at communities on Twitter, the man who's <laughs> the the man whose vagina ever so gracefully pushed me and Steven out. One just before the other, and we'll never tell. Just ten <laughs> hours ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've been inside his womb this whole time. Um, and aside you know, without, from that, yeah, go ahead. Without pops, uh, you know, <laughs> iPhone jack splitter styled umbilical cord that's been connected to us statewide for for years. I'm just now. not ready to give up those nutrients yet. I still need them. Well, between the the whiskey and the, I can only assume, plain eggs without salt or pepper, uh, yeah. <laughs> we just have, he feeds Turkey us well bacon. And, and gives us what we need. Yeah. Well, his doctor recommended it, but he's not going to give right. up the grease. Jokes aside and jokes abound, this podcast would not exist today at the state it is in, if not for the great people over at Communities on Twitter supporting us from day one. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but thanks to them, we're here and we're not going fucking anywhere. Do you think that dad's still going to talk to us ever once we start doing another podcast? I mean, we're still going to do community stuff, but do you think that he'll still like acknowledge us or are we going to be sullied a little bit because we've been touched by another man? Well, usually he doesn't mind if there are other men involved. Well, but those men are community men. Right. These are going to be How's he going to feel about a Boy Meets World boy or a... Or yeah. a good place guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope we still hear from Daddy because we didn't hear from him before this, and it would be emotionally destroying to to lose mm-hmm. our father after this as well. But thanks, yeah. communities. I mean, who's going to walk us down the aisle? I think they know, we know, they know, we know all that. How much their support means to us and how fun it has been to, like, jib and jab at him for the last three years oh i've been jibbing all right how wonderful of a foil he has been because he's always yeah hated it and loved it at the same time (laughs) and it's truly been one of the joys of this podcast to take that as far as we could yeah yeah so thanks thanks for being a good sport matt I also want to talk a little bit about the Patreon for just a second before we move on, Mm -hmm. because stuff is still chig-chag-chugging along over at patreon.com slash can't-disappoint-podcast. 
This podcast right here, You Can't Disappoint a Podcast, isn't going anywhere. We'll still be here weekly for the rest of 2022. Over on Patreon, you'll still be able to get this podcast a week early throughout the rest of the year. You'll be getting our live pre-show before we record this podcast, You Can't Disappoint a Pre-Show. New episodes of Brokeback Bebop where we're talking about the live-action Netflix Cowboy Bebop. A lot of fun stuff still going on over there on Patreon. A good time to support us to help us bridge this gap from one program to another. So come check us out. Yeah, we got lots of action over there. We've over, at this point, got to be coming towards like two days worth of stuff there, right? Too much. Truly too much Zach and Steven. Yeah. But I'm sure there's over minutes of listenable content over there if you really dig. Yeah, if you really look for it. Uncut, uh, unfiltered, unsullied, uncircumcised, unvaccinated. Yeah. You, whatever you want it to be, we got it. We don't have – I didn't get my flu shot yet. Okay, so I think that checks those things off the list. Truly, we'll say it a million times throughout this podcast. If you have supported us, it, gosh, it means a lot because we started this mm-hmm. not knowing it was a thing that people would support. <laughs> and the way people have supported yeah. it has been awesome. Steven, how are you doing, my pal, Yeah, this fine afternoon? I'm good. It's it's been a a busy time, but an exciting time nonetheless. Lots of big things happening uh, that have already happened that are about to happen. So it's 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 really a whirlwind time right now, Zach. We're expecting. Is that what are you? You're burying the lead. Yeah, We're expecting. It's, I so um, first I uh, I have a competition this week. My first competition <laughs> since getting injured. It's in Las Vegas, so I get to be out there for almost a week, which is fun. It's that um, big comeback see. victory story moment of the sports movie when when exactly. everyone's cheering and you slowly lift yourself out of your wheelchair and everyone sees if you can walk <laughs> again or not. And then you, boom, you strap on your skates, you're on the ice, and you hit that triple axel like it was nothing. <laughs> wow, I just had the craziest deja vu, Zach. Craziest what? deja vu, this exact moment. Maybe I dreamed this moment, Zach. Wow. But yes, I will be reenacting <laughs> Ice Princess. <laughs> <laughs> so Las um, Vegas. But yes, that's exciting. A lot of debauchery. Zach, what's planned. new with you? What's what's okay. new in, in your life? Um What's going on, huh? Hmm. What's happening? Not What's what's up? Not a lot. Anything really? new? Caboose. Well, tomorrow, as of recording, uh, I guess in a way to celebrate what we're doing here right now, Lily and I are going to see a Broadway musical in Indianapolis together. Wow. No ticket for uh, for old Steve, huh? Yeah, I just thought, what a perfect time to truly celebrate what I have done over the last three years <laughs> with the person who I truly could not have done it without, Lily. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I could probably maybe send you a photocopied playbill in the mail if you'd like. If you could just, like, rip up one of the little uh, seat number things for me, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, like it's, like it's someone's Chevy or whatever. What's a, I don't yeah. know cars. What's a car that you, that you steal a thing off of? A um, um, uh, Mustang has a yeah. horse on it, right? I, 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 Hang out. Oh, no, a, a, a Rolls Royce. Yeah, I'll, I'll treat go. it like a Rolls Royce now. As the seats are filling up, I'll just be <laughs> jimmying with a screwdriver off my double G7 <laughs> seat number. <laughs> well, the keys, when everyone gets up during intermission, you stay there and you just steal all the plaques. Okay, well, I think it's time to do what we're here to do and move in to the series oh no shit you know what we need to talk about that we didn't talk about steven yeah i was waiting go ahead then oh okay uh we were we interviewed andrew guest we talked about it a couple times you've heard it i hope fantastic uh if you haven't go check it out um but because of that interview uh a couple days after that interview happened uh we were actually mentioned in newsweek which is kind of i would say more than mentioned i would say featured in Newsweek. Featured, yeah. They mentioned not only the show, but us, our own names, multiple mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. It, it was obviously focused on a bit of news, a cool, exciting bit of news that we got in that interview that Gillian Anderson, after the Joel McHale 
accident or a jokey tag of Gillian Anderson in the announcement thing. That now she actually wants to be in the movie. Newsweek thought that was interesting, so they wrote an article about it. And because it came from our podcast, they linked to our podcast. They mentioned both of our names. They said the name of our podcast. It was really, really exciting for us. Really cool thing to wake up to on the day it happened. And if you're here because of that, uh, thanks. That's really neat. I want to give a special thanks to... Carla Sosenko over at Newsweek for uh, talking to us a little bit and and writing that article because it's really, really cool and a pleasure to be mentioned in such a widely regarded publication. Yeah, not just a a personal highlight and win for this podcast, but something amazing that I will remember for the rest of my life that there was a news article – that my name was in. I've been following trade pop culture news my whole life. And now yeah. there's an article from fucking Newsweek that has both of our first and last name. And I'll, oh, I'll stop bragging about it, but for it's just, a, it's just cool. It's That's just really, really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's move awesome. on. Let's talk about the series finale of this show that without we, none of this would have happened because we love this specific show so much that it was the one that we had to talk about when we finally started a podcast, Community. This is Season 6, Episode 13, Emotional Consequences of Broadcast Television. This episode we here. was directed by Rob Schraub. Robbie Schraubie. And previously he directed Basic Lupine Neurology, an infamous episode of this podcast, App Development and mm-hmm. Condiments, G.I. Jeff, Basic Sandwich, Ladders, Laws of Robotics and Party Rights, Advanced Safety Features, Grifting 101, and Modern Espionage. This episode was co-written by Dan Harmon and Chris McKenna. Dan previously wrote the pilot, Spanish 101. He co-wrote Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas with Dino Stamatopoulos. He wrote Horror Fiction and Seven Spooky Steps, Origins of Vampire Mythology, and then Repilot with Chris McKenna and Ladders with Chris McKenna, who, by the way, Chris McKenna, who co-wrote this episode, also wrote Communication Studies, The Art of Discourse, Anthropology 101, Conspiracy Theories and Interior Design, Paradigms of Human Memory, Remedial Chaos Theory. I just bonked my (laughs) microphone. Digital Exploration of Interior Design, and then with Dan, co-wrote Repilot and Ladders. And this episode was the final episode to air on the Yahoo screen, June 2nd, 2015. This episode originally aired. Was that our graduation day? Or close June to 2nd, it? 2015, was it? No, it was a school day. It was a couple... I think we probably didn't get out of school until like mid-June or something. Not mid-June. But like a like over a week into June. Our graduation had to be like the seventh or something. Like that. No, because I didn't go to my last week of high school because I had mono, and I specifically remember waking up at like six a.m. the day that the community finale aired and uh, watching watch it, it in bed before I got ready to go to school. I remember wow. it very specifically because cool. it was even at a point in season six where I was kind of like ready for this to end, mm-hmm. and I didn't exactly expect the last episode at the time, to be as series finale-y as it Mm -hmm. is. And so I wasn't as excited for it. But then I woke up that morning not planning to watch it, and I did watch it, and I was, like, crying before school. Uh, It was a really special moment that I remember. Let's do some trivia. Let's do it. For the last time until the community movie, let's do some trivia about the show. Yeah, I have an, an intentional seven questions for you today, Zachary. I think I've got I've got like nine. But wow, before what's that, that connected you know, to? It's, Nothing. It's hard for me to answer any of these questions or ask them because of this just truly horrible taste, this awful soul crushing taste in my mouth brought to us by our great friends over at Act Trivia. This is of Act course their, their new their new holiday seasonal flavor, don't forget the Holocaust. Ooh, mm, it's like, <laughs> I'm getting some, like, it's, mm, yeah. it's almost like a, it's a really rough, like, burlap texture, mm. I'm tasting, but it tastes like it's been in the oven a little too long. Oh, God, I'm tasting hints of, like, concrete and, mm-hmm. and, and just devoid of human uh, emotion. It, it makes I'm me- I'm getting, like, a little bit of, like- uh, long, 
long time owned by a family jewelry that's been shoved up an ass. Like I, something's <laughs> just really not not mixing. Yes, well for one me. in every one hundred jars of don't forget the uh-huh. Holocaust Act trivia will include Granny's fossilized shit covered holocaust ring just for you to propose to your high school girlfriend that you're gonna (laughs) cheat on while you're doing cocaine in a couple years oh boy act trivia sure knows how to paint a picture oh that's written right on the back (laughs) (laughs) who all does the dean rub the end of another year in the face of that's my uh my first question don't look um tell me what you can uh, health inspector, uh-huh. building inspector, yes. foundation inspector. Great job so far. Stop Ooh. glancing. You glanced I'm not, at I, Zach, I my saw, phone is not even. I I'm saw, looking at you. I, saw, I glanced at you. Okay. Zach, my phone is off. The okay. screen's not even sure. on. Hand it to me. I need it. Hand it I'm, to me. Thank you. I threw it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Waterline inspector. Yes. Plumber. Okay. Exterminator. Uh-huh. Those are out of order, I think. Yes. And then, uh, Dad. You missed one. And if you can come up with it in a couple seconds, without glancing, you son of a bitch. Carpenter. I will give you full credit. No, fuck you. It's geologist. Janitor. Geologist. Geologist. God damn. Damn it. <laughs> Zero um, points for Steven. <laughs> what, are the, what names aren't chosen for the new Save Greendale Committee? The Accomplishers, was that one of them? Mm-hmm. It was. And one of them is m- my question. So I know Abed's was Stephen King's Dreamcatchers, which mm-hmm. I thought was really funny. But mm-hmm. I don't really uh, – Nipple Dippers, obviously. But I don't well, – that re- one was chosen. Oh, you said what wasn't chosen. I don't remember what the other unchosen mm-hmm. ones were. Well, you're missing two. Um, Britta said The Obsoletists. <laughs> nice. And Annie said Susan. I don't remember that. And I've watched mm-hmm. this episode so closely, and I have never gathered With the that. subtitles? No, because... I don't know. I don't want to make, like, an ableist joke or something. I, no, I don't <laughs> usually watch it with the subtitles. I'll make... The Holocaust jokes are fine because it happened a couple years ago. But I'm not gonna... Yeah. I'm not gonna make an ableist <laughs> joke. <laughs> uh, no, I don't use... Sub- Do you always watch stuff with subtitles? Danny... It helps Danny as somebody who... English second language... Um, See, that's the type of joke that would have been just so easy yeah. for me to make, but I I, I refuse to be that type of person. Well, I'm also used to subtitles because I watch so much anime. Right. That and I'm not watching a, a goddamn thing unless it is in Indiana <laughs> English. <laughs> Y'all. I think it's your, your turn, it, exactly. <laughs> um, what is Abe? Oh, that was my question that you took. How? Okay, this is a tough one. Mm-hmm. How many times does the theme song Cootie Catcher show in the episode in the whole episode so like Shit. every time including um, the theme song when they when it's someone's yeah, season okay. that shows it how many do you think it let shows? me riff let me riff yeah, let me riff i want a good uh okay. educated answer can i talk through my process before i give my number? i don't care but i'm not gonna so say it's anything. not just silence okay go ahead um so we've got the opening one we've got abed's first one we've got um dean chang Frankie, Britta, Jeff does like th- one, two, three, and then Elroy does not do one. Um, does Abed do another one? I don't think. I'm going to go nine. Did I miss one? I need a final answer. I need a final answer number. Nine. Steven, that is correct. Fuck yeah! Let's and go! I counted as I watched it, so if I did count wrong, somebody let me know. But that is exactly what I mm-hmm. had. Good job. Wowza. Very okay. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Your um, turn. How much was the domain for nippledippers.com? Just a clean $10. Clean little Hamilton, yeah. Uh, what shows peaked after season six according to Chang? Okay, I'm not going to look because I do have that question. Okay. Seinfeld, The uh-huh. Simpsons, uh-huh. Friends, and uh-huh. I don't remember the last one. South Park. Uh, South Park. Fuck, I knew it started with S. I feel like it's a little bit late in the run to say Friends peaked after season six. 
Yeah, I think Friends is the I one think it was consistent after season six. And same with Seinfeld. Seinfeld. I feel like that's a little late in its run to say that it peaked. Yeah. Honestly, even The Simpsons, some of its best seasons are like four or five and six, not after season six. But those are definitely all shows that peaked well after this point of the show. Your turn. Yeah. Um, what did Annie make? What did Annie make? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. No, I feel like I need a, a tiny bit more um, context. In The Dean's Season 7, what did Annie make? In The Dean's Season 7, what did Annie make? I don't I don't know. Too mm-hmm. many Season 7s. What did, what did he um, make? What Annie's made? like, I made... I made a I made a a a, a belt with fabric. Oh, I don't remember that. Annie made a belt with fabric, a pink belt. She holds up. My next question also about no, not about Annie. This one's about our good friend Ice Cube Head. Mm-hmm. Where he comes from? What what do cell phones taste like? Wait, no, it's oh yeah, because I eat phones, and where I come where from, where I come from, they taste like they taste like. Dirt? Prime rib. Prime rib. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay, dirt. Okay, I've got I've got kind of a fuck you one. Okay. Uh, what color mugs do Chang and Abed have in the teachers' lounge? Whoa. <laughs> really harkening back to our first season. Mm. I'm gonna we like, answer. What color sock does Britta have on her left foot at timestamp fourteen oh three? I'm gonna, and then we never knew, so we stopped no. asking those questions. <laughs> and I don't know this one either. What color was the mug? Um, Chang has a red one. Abed has a blue one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next, what does Annie teach in Jeff's Greendale, The Next Generation? Criminology. Yes. Um, I've got uh, a Jeff Annie question. Um, what okay. is their hypothetical child's name? Sebastian. Sebastian. That was my next question as well. Back nice. to your child area. <laughs> uh, so my next question for you. What are the names of Jeff's sexy redheads? F- fuck if I know. Kaylee, Haley. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's three more. Samantha? Nope. Kylie? Nope. Briley? Nope. Sarah? No. Savannah? No. Holly? No. Jennifer? Nope. <laughs> Jackie? No. Chrissy? Uh-uh. Uh, Alex? Nope. Kara? Uh uh-uh. uh, no. K- Kiara? Uh uh-uh. uh, no. Nope. Ki- Kiara? <laughs> no, I would have said I would have given you a Kiara if it was Kiara. Kim uh, Kumu? Tiffany? Stephanie? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think we're starting Slimey? to get some repeats. <laughs> Slimy? <laughs> I'm gonna call it it Slimy. We were looking uh-huh. for <laughs> we were looking for Brianna. Uh huh. Or Mackenzie. Mm, I didn't or say Mackenzie. Phoebe. Oh, surprising. Mm-hmm. And and even though there weren't any other girls, he said, and the rest of you are the redheaded ones. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any more? No, it was my last one. I've got one last one for you then. All right, lay it on me. In the community board game, what does the friend zone card do? <sighs> Moves you back a space? Yes. Hell Yeah. Good job, Steven. That well, was a touch and like go round of trivia, but just overall you did added well. benefits. Thank well, you. Well, I think you did great. Overall, for the series of community, who do you think do we is it a win lose or draw for each of us on 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 trivia for the series? What do you think? Like against each other or total? Yes. I don't see how those two um, are different. Well, against oh, you mean like each as other a, as or a against unit? the trivia? I'm, I, it's, as always, very much against each other. I think, Zach, I used to do better than you, but now I think it's pretty even. We nail the email questions, though. 
I remember more things about the show in general, I would say. Mm -hmm. But you're better at what color was this or what was on screen when this happened. I think we've both Mm -hmm. gotten really good at asking questions. Yes, I think so, too. I I think we nailed the email questions. You mentioned those. Let's get into them. Uh, This is a very special week. I think that the emails have been such an integral part of this podcast to let these people be a personality on the show alongside us, and I'm very excited to see what we have for this last episode. Well, and it's pretty perfect, Zach, because we've got six emails today, one for each season of Community. The first one is from our great friend, Brandon Fulcomer. Hey. Are you familiar with him? He's written No, are you confusing him for Brandon? Oh, Briandant. My bad. (laughs) My bad, Briandant. He says, hey, guys, it feels so weird watching this episode knowing that a movie is coming. I really thought this would be the last time we saw these characters. And if that were the case, I think this would have been a great way to go out. Agreed. Um, This episode is hilarious, meta, and heartfelt. All the best qualities of this show. I love all the pitches and think the actors did a fantastic job performing them in the voice of who was pitching. Absolutely. Um, I also like the way Jeff Annie is wrapped up. So if you like the pairing, you can imagine them giving it a shot down the line. And if you don't, you can assume that they never did. Very, but very now a movie true. is coming. So this and much more will likely be answered. It still doesn't quite feel real. Yeah. Also, yeah. the end tag is batshit insane, and I love it. Yeah, it's a mind fuck. It's great. It sure is. Um, trivia. What did the Save Greendale Committee rename themselves? Nipple Dippers. Nipple Dippers. Mm-hmm. Um, according to Chang, what shows peaked after season six? Seinfeld, Seinfeld South Simpson, Park, South Simpsons, Park, Friends. Uh, Friends, yeah. Happy Days. Um, who, who comprises <laughs> Jeff's Nightmare Season 7 study group? Um, it was... Garrett, Todd, Dave, Leonard, Todd, Dave, Vicky. That was it. Vicky. Vicky mm-hmm. and Seth Green. <laughs> Scrunch. Scrunch! <laughs> Double click this, winger. <laughs> um, and then why does Annie hold the Dean's spare key so he'd stop leaving it under the welcome under mat under the mat yeah uh, we got all of those right favorite funny moments uh, a lot of good ones here but I'll go with the in tag the look of despair on the family's face after they realize the state of their existence is hilarious <laughs> uh, MVP yeah gonna go with the four remaining OG study group members in a tie Abed's monologue that's about not TV. how it works Brendan Boo. This is not season no, two, that's homie. That's not we don't do how that it anymore. works, Brendan. Drop mm. it. Mm-mm. Nope. I did it one Britta's time. sobbing about her. I did pitch. it one time. Annie's maturity in her final scene with Jeff. You did. Uh, Jeff and Jeff overcoming his fears of losing his friends and being okay with letting them go. All the actors crushed it, but when do they not? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sound it out. You'll find it. <laughs> Brain, brain, don't. Why do I feel like you're about to have a slug come out of your mouth like you're Ron Weasley <laughs> in the second Harry Potter <laughs> movie, I think? And the slug's name is Brandon? That'd be great. <laughs> um, all right, next email. Thank you, uh, Brendan. Yeah, You've thank been a you. great emailer. And if we don't get to tell you, yeah, again, it's thanks been great for to it. chat with you these last yeah. couple seasons. Um, our if next you ever email run into is us from... in person, just keep walking. Don't say anything. We're busy. Yeah, don't say shit. God. Don't meet your heroes. Just let us walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. Um, get the beer. Here though. we the go. The beer will be great. Come this on, is the the final uh, regular episode email from our dad Zach. He wrote Papa. in. Um, okay, I'm he ready. He said, "Hi guys, my MVP Hi. is Joel's Jeff. No hidden trivia. No Solid notes. choice. Um, guys, thanks for lazy, picking community." Okay. Thank you for being integral to the fandom for these last two years. Thank you for being absolute dorks in the best way. I'm not Aww. going to miss being called your dad, but you are permanently a part of my family now until you break the law doing something stupid or cover friends on your podcast. That's really funny. Aww. Love you guys truly. Sincerely, Matt. Wow. Beautiful. That was really nice. Almost and brings he a did tear do to my trivia. eye. Just not. I know. Me too. No um, trivia. No just, notes. Just nice stuff about how much I like you <laughs> but guys. But here's three but questions. But dude, try um, my trivia. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, what movie inspired the kiss goodbye? No clue. I only know because of the audio commentary. Apparently, it's from Drop Dead Fred. Never and seen And Dan it. talked to how it's all about how the kiss goodbye 
it's different and more powerful than a romantic or sexual kiss. It, it's complicated and means mm-hmm. a lot of things and isn't just a, a romantic kiss. And I think it, it is really special. But I've never seen Drop Dead Fred. Um Okay. Uh, yeah, me neither. Uh, the next question, Zach, I'm going to let you rattle off this one without glancing. Okay. Uh, who did the dean single oh. out in his last announcement other than the students? He says name three. He doesn't say anything about the students, by the way, in that announcement. He yeah. doesn't say that. Mm-hmm. Health inspector, um, water line inspector, foundation inspector. There's three. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Geologist, yeah. um, plumber. Mm-hmm. I know I forgot some of the inspectors mm-hmm. and dad. That's all I'm going to do. How many did I miss? Uh, exterminator and okay. building inspector. Okay. I'll take that. Not bad. And then last one. What was Britta's new name for the group? The Obsoletus. Mm-hmm. Um, we got all those. Uh, thanks again, guys. Good boys. Oh, that was that Aww. was really nice, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, that just um, made me pop one a little bit. The good boys part. Yeah, I like that. Right? Now, next time, mm. call us bad boys. Mm-hmm. And send a picture of like your hand or a gif. A gif would be good of the hand just really coming at me. Um, Matt, our next email, man, is from. No, come on, Liz. Matt. We gotta tell Matt. We love you, Matt, and you know we love you. And even though you're not going to retweet our podcast anymore once we stop talking about community, we're we're friends now. We're actual friends. You're a cool dude. Yeah. Thanks for all you do. And the growth of the community's account and the interaction and connection of the community fan base, largely because of Twitter, largely because of you, incredible work. That's it. Well, I mean – even, you know, not to bring up our Newsweek article again, but that wouldn't have happened without Matt at all. Mm-mm. You know, he knew so, who to email immediately. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And also, yeah. he's been the one throughout all of this that would be like, no, you have something to share. So you should you should look for mm-hmm. that. Or alternatively, he has no problem telling us, no, I don't really think that's something that is of any – you know what I mean? I, he's been such great guidance through yeah, a like lot a of stuff. Yeah, like a good daddy just does. Like, just like a good daddy that I want to be a good sloppy little boy for. Mm-hmm. Slop it up. Thanks, man. What's Thanks, next? Thanks, Dad. Let's continue the Our next the email Jack is from Fest. Liz Christie. Okay. Right? Don't know her. Uh Liz says, hello, nipple dippers. I wanted to send an email before it all ends. Oh, so ominous. A little bit. Are um, we going to die says, once we finish? Yeah, I we hope. Die? Uh, Liz says, I've been listening since the tail end of the second season, and it's been an honor to witness the progression of your authentically weird and crass radio personalities, <laughs> podcastmanship, best boyhood. That's great. Let's go with the last one. Nice. I'm truly sad that we've come to the end of the community series with you, best boys, but I'm excited to see what you do next. Aw, that's so sweet. Anyway, thoughts on the series finale. Endings are hard, but I think they nailed it with this last episode. There were so many different versions of the show during its airtime, just through the natural and unnatural progression of the cast and crew changing. Mm -hmm. It was only suiting that the last episode would use a meta lens to address that while pulling at our heartstrings and making us laugh. My favorite funny moments were, I don't like that word, hemorrhaging. I'll see what I can do. That was such um, a funny Dean, non sequitur. That was no, hilarious. She, she's, Frankie's like, I'll I'll see what I can do. Like, what you want me to do something about? <laughs> you don't like when people say that word. <laughs> the word. <laughs> um, the dean running into the study room in a diaper in Jeff's version of season seven, mm-hmm. and the dad in the end tag saying, "You stupid child. Nobody's stupid winning anything." Child. <laughs> My favorite moment overall, though, was when Jeff hugs Abed at the airport and then like a crying mm. emoji, which is well deserved. Um, it reminded me of the first scene in the pilot with the two of them. Mm-hmm. I see your value now. Mm. Yeah. Trivia. Number one, what shows were referenced for shows that peaked after season six? Seinfeld, South Park, Friends, uh, 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 Duck Dynasty. <laughs> Ooh, we're looking for swamp people. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Simpsons. Uh, who was sitting in Troy's old seat in Jeff's second version of season seven after oh, Annie God. told them she was going to DC? Oh, shit. In Troy's seat? Because um, well, that's so that... hard for me to even remember where that was because it was next to Pierce and Chang. neither of them are there now. It's usually Chang, but is it somebody Chang. else in that one? Or no, wait, 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 wait. Was it His the second one? So the that's when it's with the, all the, the other characters. study group. Is it whoever's who next to there. Scrunch? Yeah, who's, who's next, next to Scrunch? Who's next to Scrunch? 
Who's next to scrunch? Vicky. Who's next to scrunch? I think, was I think Vicky? Vicky's next to scrunch. Yeah. Or is it Garrett? No. Because Vicky's next to Jeff. No, Leonard. It's Leonard because Garrett's holding Leonard's mm. hand. Yep. It's Leonard. It's Good Leonard. Good question. Yeah. I feel um, like I just did math. Yeah. What was Seth Green's character's name? Scrunch! Obvious, the classic Scrunch. And if we don't get Scrunch truly owning, there are some things from this that I would like to be canon in the community movie. I got to yes. have Scrunch. I definitely got to have Scrunch. I got to have Dean. You got to be in Dean school. I got to have Dean that school. stuff in the, in the movie. <laughs> Um, what shows did Abed reference when explaining the show that he'll be working on at his new job? 30 Rock and IT Crowd. IT Crowd. What a cute moment. It's like yeah. me. Yeah. Danny also, Booty, uh, serious IT here. Crowd connections on this show because not only was Matt Berry in an episode uh-huh. of season six and he plays the head of uh, Denim Industries in the last <laughs> couple seasons. That's funny. Um, Joel McHale also was in the American pilot for IT Crowd. Yeah, and Steven's never brought it up before. <laughs> um, until next time, Liz Christie. Um, okay, Liz had Garrett in the seat next to, or in Troy's old seat, but I don't think that's right, Liz. I think you're wrong. I am not. Uh, I think he might have been next to Scrunch. Because but he was holding you, Leonard's hand, when and he see, was next to Vicky. Steven. He wasn't next to Vicky. When you see him holding Leonard's hand, when when you see him holding Leonard's hand, you don't see the person next to him because you're waiting for the scrunch reveal later. Vicky and Dave sit. No, Todd and Dave sit next to each other. Vicky's. Who cares where Vicky sits? Move it. Move on. All my friends hate Vicky. Uh, thank you so much, Liz. He's that was a very great kind email. words. Thanks for writing in. Um, our next email is from. Jeffrey Malone. <laughs> Enemy uh, of the podcast. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey says, oh boy, Zach and Steven. Uh, that's what everyone that sees us says. Oh boy, <laughs> Zach and yeah, Steven. Yeah, whenever we walk towards a group of people we recognize from high school. Oh boy, <laughs> Zach and Steven. How many sentences till they mention the Newsweek article, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Two, we saw three. both of your Facebook posts <laughs> and Twitter and, and yeah, be real Instagram. <laughs> 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 um, here are my thoughts on emotional consequences of broadcast television. Oh my God. I love this episode. It's one of my favorite <laughs> episodes of community. And one of my favorite series finales of all time. I love all the season seven pitches. I love when they get emotional about their missing friends. I love Joel McHale's acting when Jeff is freaking out. Yeah. I love Jeff and Annie's conversation in the study room. Yeah. I love the moment when Jeff drops Annie and Abed off at the airport. Mm-hmm. I love the tag. It's such a perfect button on everything. Trivia. Good thoughts, Jeff. Yeah, totally thanks, agree. Jeff. Uh, trivia. Who played Sebastian? Do you it's know Chris McKenna's son. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan said his name, but I don't remember. Charlie McKenna, i.e. Chris McKenna's son. Um, episode MVP, Annie, Preventer of Disaster. Uh, favorite uh-huh. funny moments, this is one of mine, Absurd Reaction. Absurd Reaction. I'm glad <laughs> that he mentioned that because I forgot to write it down. I love yeah, that moment. I wrote that one down. Um, Ice Cube Head and You Stupid Child. <laughs> uh, woohoo, Jeffrey Malone. Writer <laughs> I Andrew, agree. Jeff Malone's email account. I couldn't say it better myself. Woohoo. Jeffrey Malone. Jay Stop Money. saying com, his Jeffrey phone Malone. number. Com, Stop HTTP saying colon, it. Slash slash Twitter dot com slash J Money Malone. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit so much of that out. Can you just bleep that whole section? Someone's <laughs> mowing very loudly outside my my apartment right now. It wouldn't be a, a, a series finale. It's probably you Jeffrey fucking Malone. If it wasn't for that. Yeah, because you just doxed him in front of dozens of online listeners. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You've been a fun foil the last month or so. I uh, I'm gonna read uh, Artie's next. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. You're a you're a mensch. Um, Artie says hi, Stephen and Zach. Hi. I imagine as this is the finale episode of Community, you'll be getting tons of emails. How you spell tons in England? How'd Holy she spell shit. it? T-O-N-N-E-S. There's two extra letters. No, she says that 
Tony's going to be emailing us a lot <laughs> this week. Shmlantha! Shmlangela! Um, tons of emails, so I'll try not to waffle too much in this Hey, one. we got syrup and butter. Let that waffle <laughs> bake. You don't Spoiler, bake a waffle. I may have What failed. do you do to a waffle? How um, do you... When I... You don't bake I a like waffle. waffles with butter. You just and make syrup a waffle. That wasn't the question. You like move on. It's fine. Cook a waffle. What do you do? You make a waffle. Right. But you don't make eggs. I guess. You, you you'd say I'm going to go make some eggs. You'd say I'm going to go make some eggs. Why can't you make eggs? Is that like laying them though? <laughs> you can cook some eggs. Well, <laughs> But you would say I'm making pancakes. So you can say I'm making waffles. Oh, settles it. Donkey and Shrek in the you morning. Make them. I'm making waffles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Artie. Thanks for writing in this week. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the email. Next email. No time. <laughs> Up next. <laughs> we settled um, it. Artie says, <laughs> when I first watched Emotional Consequences of Broadcast Television, I was underwhelmed. I chalked that up to me being kind of stupid. I also found the Good Place finale anticlimactic. Artie, what the fuck? Sorry. What? I have since okay, grown to sorry, appreciate Artie. both finales more and more with each rewatch. Yeah, I was like, Artie, come on. Uh, but the community finale in particular fills me with a sadness that can only be cured by going all the way back to season one, episode one, immediately after. Sure, Aww. yeah. Um, seeing Jeff unravel when he realizes that some of his close friends are moving on from Greendale as he contemplates that he may never leave is hard and poignant. But I love how the sadness is balanced with characters like the Dean, Britta, and Chang being their usual absurd selves. I'm always happy to see Shirley return in a couple of the flash-forward pitches and interact with both Frankie and Elroy. And I loved how each of the pitches revealed each character's desires for their future. Yeah, it was great to see Yvette. The little runner that she gets when she's talking about the I'm so plot hole my A story, the little monologue that she gets, she absolutely nails. Yeah, it was really good. To clarify something that cropped up in my last in my email last week, no, I absolutely do not ship Jeff and Annie. I think the finale addressed their relationship in the best way possible, but every now yeah. and then I come across a Redditor who thinks the finale ended with Jeff and Annie becoming an item. After a fake flash forward where Jeff realizes that he has no idea what Annie wants and a conversation between the two where it is clear that she's outgrown her desire for him, I don't even particularly want them to become an item in the movie, but we shall see. It seemed clear to me that Jeff is in a panic about being stuck and grasping onto the idea of being with Annie made him feel a bit more secure, just like he did when he proposed to Britta in the season five finale. And this has sure. not a lot to do with any of his actual feelings for Annie at all. My MVP I both for agree the and disagree. Is, mm. I don't completely agree with Artie there. I think there is a lot of weight to the Jeff and Annie stuff here for both of them that speaks a lot to the feelings they've both had and pushed aside for the last six years. And I absolutely do not think it ends with them as an item. I think it ends with them being No, like, I think it specifically I'm leaving. doesn't. We're not going to be in the same place anymore. You missed your shot and you've got to live with that now. Maybe in the future yeah. after Annie's gotten to do some of the things that she's listed that she's liked to do and when she feels mm-hmm. like a more experienced, lived adult, maybe they'll be in the right place place to have a relationship with each other honestly if i ever wanted there to be a jeff and annie thing the community movie years removed from when they met in community college when together, jeff is 50 but when annie's 35 or whatever it's a totally different story than when she's barely 18 or 19 and mm-hmm. he's 35 or whatever i think if if because annie's gonna have done so much more growing and jeff was an emotionally stunted person who i imagine will have also done a lot of growing and i think if there ever was mm-hmm. a time for it to happen it would be then and the show here makes great lemonade out of how this was not the time and the the love and desire mm-hmm. and feelings were there but it wasn't the time and now that time has passed and i think it's beautiful personally mm. Artie's MVP for the episode is Abed, and his monologue about TV and his maturity throughout the episode yeah. um, brings a com- oh, metronome aside brings a calmness and comfort that I think balance out Jeff's existential crisis really well. Um, well said, Artie. This was probably a bit too much waffle, but I look forward to never too much waffle. Uh, there's, <laughs> but I look forward to hearing your thoughts on Community's final episode. I know this won't be the last ever community podcast episode you're doing, but I wanted to say now that I've tried listening to at least three other community podcasts, and yours has been the only one I've properly stuck with. 
You're both humble, self-depreciating people. That <laughs> So let me be the one to tell you that you're excellent podcasters. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Artie, thank you so um, much. And may Artie, we say really nice. that you're an excellent writer. Your emails are great and blow our preparation yeah. out of the water. So thanks for hanging out with us. You yeah. truly have been a great addition to the show. Truly. Yeah, Artie closes it with saying, well wishes from, apparently, one of your favorites. You both said it last episode. You can't take it back. It's already gone to my head. Artie. Artie, you, you hold I won't take crown, it back. So you are one of our favorites. Uh, one more email today. This one is from Danny. Hi, Danny. Uh, Danny says, hello, guys. Disclaimer, this will be the absolute worst email. I don't have questions, a funny moment, an MVP, or any bones. Well, no that, bones. That's I asked specifically. Literally for bones. all that we have asked for. Why yeah. did you email us? <laughs> um, it said I watched the episode last night and it made me incredibly emotional, as it usually does. But this time it was mostly because it reminded me how special your podcast has been for me. It has become a weekly habit in my life for the past two years, or however long. Habit's it's been. a good word. Right? It's pretty much the only thing that's been consistent in my life and hasn't changed since 2020, which I truly appreciate because I don't deal well with change. It kept me sane in the middle of the pandemic when I was stuck in Mexico. It's my go-to podcast when I'm feeling down because I know you'll make me laugh. It made me rewatch and fall in love again with community. And most importantly, this podcast is literally the reason why I became closer to Steven two years ago. And that's the most special thing to me. Oh, sorry. Steven's crying? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and that's the most special thing in the world to me. That's so sweet, Danny. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I just want to say okay. thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know it's not as an easy thing to maintain, but you did it. And so successfully. Thank you for bringing us so much joy, laughter, and making us a part of your friendship. Anyway, sorry for being so cheesy. I can't wait to hear what we're watching next. Biggest of hugs, Danny. Well, thank you, Danny. I love you more than anything. And Ooh. I think you're just the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> you seem really great. <laughs> uh, thanks, for, thanks for all the support. We were just talking before we started the show how much – uh, Danny and my partner Lil, how much they totally get what we're doing here, how much they support it, and how much they interact with it. It, it really means a lot to us. So, from the bottom of my heart, too, thumbs up, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. You're all right by me. Whew. So, what do I censor out when Steven cries? <laughs> no, you can keep it. I don't want to trigger anybody. <laughs> with kidding. my crying. That was really, really nice. And that's the last email, isn't it? That is the last email. Well, we're <laughs> an hour into the podcast. It's time to dry up those tears as quick as you can because you've got some oh, work no. to do, my friend. Zach, this is not going to go well. From the bottom of my heart, it's time for the last time here on You Can't Disappoint a Podcast until we get the community movie to find out, did Steven did watch the Steven episode? Watch oh, don't the fucking episode. cry, baby. This week. This week. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh man oh yeah, what a fucking baby all right so <laughs> uh you've got 20 seconds on the clock as always you said you're not gonna do very well uh well i don't think it has to be that way why do you feel that way i think what i'm gonna do is not gonna score high okay well you've got to keep in mind that we just spent what 30 minutes reading emails of people buttering our bread. We're crying <laughs> because we do a fucking community <laughs> podcast and your girlfriend thinks it's neat. Uh, I, I think you're, you're, my heart's in the right place to grade this very well. You I know. Maybe I'm just emotionally because right. Matt made me freaking tear up too. Right. And we talked about coming out of his vagina today. <laughs> Not minutes <laughs> before. <laughs> See, that's why I think our podcast truly is special because like community, we can do both of those things on a, on a flip yeah. of a dime. I'm so fucking emotionally all over the place that I'm crying, laughing, screaming all within a 30 second range when I talk to Steven. <laughs> You've got 30 seconds on the clock. I want you to go in with higher spirits because this is the last one. Everybody's watching the whole – what? You say 30? 20. Fuck that. No backseat. It's 20. It's 20. Okay. 
It's 30. <laughs> uh, for the last time here, look, the whole country of Argentina is on bated breath to see what you're going <laughs> to do with this. Are you ready, my friend? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. It's the end of season six, uh, or year six, whatever you want to call it. What would the next year be like? The gang all gets together and talks about what they want it to be, whether it's you know, missing members, returning members, but the important thing is they're all together. You know, people leave, people go, and they have to deal with that. Jeff deals with that. Abed cries a little. Abed's going to LA Stop. and he's an FBI. Well, get those tissues back out, buddy, because I think <laughs> I think you did okay because this episode's about like big emotions and big ideas. So saying stuff like Jeff has to deal with that does a mm -hmm. lot of heavy lifting. So you didn't say anything about the Jeff nanny scene, which is a yeah. huge part of it. But well. saying Jeff has to deal with that can include that. I don't think mm -hmm. you did horrible, but I don't think you did well as usual. Uh, I'm feeling, man, but I, I, I'm in such a good mood right now. And I don't want to <laughs> bring it down, but I don't want to reward. You know what I mean? It's like when yeah, you're a teacher and you really like your student. Your students they really just don't do the work. They're yeah. really funny and they're really clever, but they're fucking dumb as bricks. Mm -hmm. So you've got to give them the C plus that they deserve. Hey, thanks, buddy. I'll take it. <laughs> I went C plus instead of B minus because it seemed nicer somehow. It did, truly. Yeah. Well, B, now let's B move on. B minus would seem like a pity. Fuck, you know. I don't. Yeah. Let's move on to the next I segment that's going to take way longer than it usually does. Let's talk about mm -hmm. our favorite funny moments from the series finale of Community. Jesus Christ, do I have a long list? I'll kick it off. Let's wrap. I've got fire. a lot too. He's I got like a rapid fire. This bitch. I like in the very beginning, Jeff having these, like, I don't give a fuck asides. When Abed says something meta, he's like, good job, bad idea. Just, like, barely even yeah. thinking about his, his quips at Abed anymore. Made me laugh. Um, the first one I had was, am I stealing your raise, dude? <laughs> Frank, I thought that was funny. Obviously, I binged pretty hard after the bell rang. <laughs> I thought that I was that really too. funny. Um, people use LinkedIn. I wrote that down, just the whole idea of, no, LinkedIn hired me to figure out why. <laughs> I thought that was a funny joke. I wish we got more yeah. Elroy in this episode, but his mm -hmm. highlight in the beginning was funny. Um, yeah. You go ahead. Give me another one. Um, where's Annie? She's I like you guys, but she's the only one that gets me. <laughs> uh, I liked Abed's when he's playing pool and talking about, why does every bar scene start with people playing pool? And every time people play pool, are they unknowingly starting another bar scene? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. That was good. Um, of course, the Dean's, oh, I don't like that word. About hemorrh hemorrhaging? hemorrhaging? Hemorrhaging. That was my next oh. one. I'll yeah, see what weird. I can do, <laughs> Frankie says. <laughs> uh, Shirley's run of setup jokes, I mentioned that. I, I won't even try to redo it, but she did it. I thought it was yeah. really impressive how well Yvette stepped back into the way that Shirley in that voice would deliver those really wordy lines. I thought she just did a phenomenal oh, job. Oh, yeah. Um, I love Britta's absurd reaction. Uh, I liked it when it was Abed's version of season seven, and they're like, what do you think, Abed? And his like, eyes are rolling in the back of his head, and yeah. he's like, in another place entirely. It was really funny. That's great. Um, I liked when Shirley to Frankie was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> is this is this matchup going to work? Yeah. Uh, I wrote down, this is a Dean thing, Shirley or Elroy, how about there's a whole third black person? They And then oh when he goes, God. they sit wherever they want, as of the 1960s, and then for the longest time, he's in his head, like we were trying to figure out who was sitting in Troy's seat. He's like, they yeah. sit, uh, they, uh, no, they sit, uh, uh, they sit wherever <laughs> they want, okay? I thought that was really funny. <laughs> that was good. Um, I liked the buff baby Dean when he walked in the first time. Oh, That's yeah. a really funny reveal. Uh, when it's the scene with the extra black person character and it's just a black guy sitting on the trash can in the background oh of the God. scene. It was really funny. It was so good. Um, I don't think this is the funniest line, but for shock factor, it did make me kind of laugh when the Dean was talking to Abed. He's like, you know, isn't the shape of your brain kind of fucked up? Fucked but up. just saying the <laughs> F word, I was like, whoa. Unexpected, yeah. It, mm -hmm. it does. It's mean, but it. But coming yeah. from the dean, it is. It funny. doesn't sound It'd so bad. It'd be like yeah. if Chang said it or something. Yeah. Um, I wrote down when everyone during the dean's version when everyone's like moving their hand like the dean w does when he's making yeah. shit up. And I of all the like like someone I forget who in the emails mentioned that them doing the seasons in the voice mm -hmm. of the people who's riffing them. The dean one and everyone riffing like the dean. That one was my favorite. That was so good. 
Um, I really liked in the Dean one when Britta was like, I, maybe vote or don't vote. <laughs> There was a part, I forget even which season seven it was, but when, it's the Ice Cube head one. When Jeb is like, Britta, how you doing, girl? Annie, you're looking fine over there. I thought it was really funny. <laughs> um, I liked in the Deans. I thought it was funny when in unison, Elroy and Shirley start talking and they're like, hallelujah, and church, and singing, and street wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Dean, when he's dancing in the diaper, and then it cuts to him in the bar doing oh the same Oh my god, dance. that was so funny. Um, I liked the whole runner with Chang and, and the files. Because he said <laughs> that once in his, then in uh, Jeff's later one, they're like, Chang, we have files. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Todd. Lots of things can be forced. Like Lots of things can be forced. Like a human head through a six-inch drain pipe. Then... Dave's like, what? He's like, just kidding, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole uh, scene was really funny. Um, I especially loved Leonard's like run about Pearl Harbor. He's like, seen so many zeros since the sky of Pearl Harbor. He's like, black smoke. Dude, bombs. we've barely even begun to talk. We haven't talked about what we think about the episode at all yet. No, we haven't. And how much this episode packs into it while sticking to this everyone's riffing a season thing all yeah. of the all of the like side characters that get some of their funniest moments in the whole mm -hmm. show in this episode it does so much so well and it demands to be it's watched great. like a hundred times because there's so many details to pick up in it go ahead yeah. is it your turn or mine um it's your turn Okay. Uh, I just thought it was funny how the setup where uh, Britta's parents have been murdered, it's really obvious that Chang oh killed God. Britta's parents because he's, like, going under the table and, like, hiding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really liked the – I thought it was funny Britta's opening to her season seven was like, Bam I can't count the reasons, reasons I should stay. stay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a picture of Greendale on a barge floating in the middle of the ocean. And yeah. Britta's on the phone with the government because they're like terrorists that are becoming a country. That's so funny. Her F-bomb was really funny too. I don't know exactly what This is said. fucking war. Yeah. <laughs> Ira, um, do you really want a bunch of people dressing you? It would be polite to try. <laughs> On that same vein, Trans Dean, when when Britta's Dean is like, uh, yeah, I'm Britta, strictly all this stuff. transgender. I'm not all that other stuff. And the Dean's like, all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm not crazy, but I am flawed. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> there was kind of a moment, and I don't often agree with this sentiment, but in the commentary, Dan was kind of like, I'm sure people could find a reason why to be offended by this moment, but I think it's really funny. And I mm -hmm. agree. I do yeah, think it's, it's funny. pretty funny for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, um, I think go it's, for it. Uh, Frankie's boring version of the show. I always liked – I also liked everyone riffing as Frankie and like, hello, hello. And then they keep talking about something else hello. and then there's one more, hello. I thought it was really funny. And when in she's Frank like, uh, well, it's set in a school after all. Why aren't we learning yeah. things? Um, in that same one when she's being Annie and she's like, I have – we could learn about science. Like she's like trying to start a sentence and just uh -huh. switch. We could learn about science or history. Um, I liked after Jeff's version where everyone works at Greendale and after the scene, Chang's like, am I on meds in it? I'm mellow and relatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Jeff's one, I liked when Annie was like – and I'm back to season one, Andy, now, where I'm hot, but not little girl hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I also love when Jeff is imagining that he and Annie have a child together. I think it says some really funny things about when people on TV shows have children later in the series. Mm -hmm. They're like, Sebastian, let's look at him. Come on out here, yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian says something like, I did it. And then they're like, all right, back to your <laughs> back child to the area. area. That was really funny. Um, I thought that... One of the few things that doesn't work for me in this episode is a Chang thing. But one Chang thing that does work for me is when after Abed does his six cools, then Chang's like, can you do that again? And then he farts during season four. I was like, that's an inside joke. Do you not like the I'm legit gay? Do you not like that? I don't. I like it. And I'll it. explain why when we get there. That's fine. In fact, I don't quite like the moment you just mentioned because I mm -hmm. think uh, – Actually, Colin on the Hop Ons podcast said that he thinks – Later seasons of Community do a lot of work to, like, um, 
to justify the things people say about season four. And maybe it's not all mm-hmm. earned. And it says a lot more about what Dan thinks about season four at this time mm-hmm. and feeling kind of butthurt about it. And it's one of those moments that I don't quite love the way that like his vitriol yeah. finds its way in the show. But I'm excited to hear what you think about that last moment. I guess we'll get to it later. Mm-hmm. Um, then I guess it's my turn. Uh, Jeff and Annie looking both ways before they trash Marvel movies I thought was really funny. Yeah. As if Joe and Anthony Russo will just uh, apparate and beat the shit out of them for talking bad about them. It right. It's really funny. I – that part was like kind of funny to me but not the funniest joke. But um, I thought it was funny because I feel that uh, – and I have always felt the same exact way about the Marvel movies. Mm. It's okay to be wrong. Um <laughs> I like when Frankie's like, as a humble outsider that came in and nailed it, let's all... Like, Iconic that, that was line, really because of course she did. She yeah. nailed it. Nailed it. Um, I've got just one more thing. It's the moment that you said you don't like, but specifically when Shang says he's gay, the face that the Dean makes, he's like... He well, like, I did like that. Smiles like that and cocks. He's like, mm, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, I have a couple more other than that. I, had the, I thought that the redhead table... Was kind mm-hmm. of funny that Jeff's like, all right, we'll after like this whole heartfelt thing. like thing, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, and of course, the it, I just wrote down in tag, holy shit, yeah, because it's 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 great. I have some qualms mm. that I've grown into about that in tag, and it's mostly that same idea that the ending of the episode makes me want to cry. And yeah. then the end tag is Dan Harmon's angry and he wants to tell us all about it. Ah, and it mm-hmm. is really funny the way it's all like none of this is real. What is real? But some of his yeah. rant at the end I think is a little too narcissistic, even though he calls mm-hmm. it narcissistic in the thing. We can talk about that yeah. a little bit later when we dive into it. That's uh, well, it's time to talk about it, isn't it? Let's do it. Before we start going through the episode, I want to hear specifically from you a little bit. Something we've talked about from the very beginning of this show is that you had never seen the the series finale of Community, I'm imagining, until yesterday or today, right? Yesterday was the first time I watched it last And we've talked about it a lot, especially as we've gone through season six and you've been so sour on a lot of it. I've been a little mm-hmm. bit nervous to hear what you think of this last episode. Yeah. We've buried – we've, like, given away – I at least know that you like it. But I'm very excited now mm-hmm. for you to tell me what you thought of it as you watched it for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I'll say I'm glad that I watched it again today. Because I like it even more the second time through, and I'm sure I'll like it even more the third time through. I, I've watched it 20 times, and I like it more every time I watch it. It's absolutely one of those episodes. Yeah. I think that this is a pretty perfect ending to the TV show community. I think that the episode itself, the concept, is is exactly what you want. It's as close to the best episode yeah. of the show that you that like of the of that concept that nobody has done anything like up to that point. Um, and I think it calls back to that in a really good and original way. I think there's a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of funny jokes in this episode. There's a couple of things that I don't really love and I think are a little bit unnecessary, but I understand why everything that's in there is in there. But I really liked it. I'll be excited to hear what those are when we get to them. Yeah. I think that this is... Uh, a perfect episode of Community and it's a perfect finale for the show. Whether it's the ultimate ending or not, I think it works brilliantly i think it does all of the things that community does so well i would say better than any of season six has done it so far Mm -hmm. i think this episode's hilarious i think it's i think it does all of the things that community has done so well all of the huge thematic homage weird riffy things that the show does but because of the finality that this episode has even more so than like the season three finale when they thought the show might get canceled it has yeah. more emotional weight for me than any other episode uh, in in the series does, which I think lifts the episode up even more. That it's so gonzo and weird, and it's so fucking funny. One of the funniest episodes in a long time. And there's like three parts in this that make me tear up. Yeah. I think this is a really, really, really well done episode. There's like at least two for sure that, that get me pretty like – Every t- I know for a fact every time I watch this episode, I'm going to cry at two parts for sure. Yeah. Well, for the last time, let's dive into the episode. Anything you've got to say? Do. Yeah. We can too. We sure can. Let's do it. The final episode of Community, I mean, it gets off 
right away with like empty hallway. It's a little dark. You get the the final episode vibes, but we see Leonard, and I think with uh, I think with Richard Erdman not being with us anymore and dying just a few years after Community ended. Uh, this is a, a really cute tribute to him in, in his appearances yeah. in this episode. I love that the episode starts off with him uh, announcing that the school year's over by yelling, School's out, bitches! <laughs> and just like they've always done perfectly, they find another hilarious Dean announcement to make uh, that, that wraps things up. There, there's nothing like a season starting or ending with shots of students walking around Greendale or empty Greendale as the Dean makes his announcements. It's really nice. Yeah, I love it. I think that they, when making this episode, you can tell they were like, okay, what are our favorite things about the show? And then Hmm. they just did them here, and I think that it's great. It works so well. Love Abed's shirt this episode, too. Unlike the season five finale that was about, okay, so what do they do when there's nothing to do? And it was really boring Mm -hmm. and not that good of an episode. Or the first half of the season five finale, whichever one that was. This yeah. episode makes such great material out of, well, school's done and we're done with our work and we've all kind of got stuff that we're going to go do and we've got a few more hours left in this day to spend together as a group and what are we going to do with it, I think is really yeah. nice. Yeah, I think so too. I think that it's a really good setup because you don't expect – what the episode's going to be right off the bat. Right. I like that. I remember the first time that I watched it, I don't think there was any uh, advertising that made it seem like it was going to be the type of episode that mm-hmm. it was. And each time that they did another riff and showed the cootie catcher again, I was like, we're still doing this. They're doing yeah. it another time, but not in a bad way. It was like in a in that surprise way that community gets you sometimes. I was like, this mm-hmm. is what I was expecting. And I didn't know that this was what I wanted, but all of a sudden it is. Yeah. Then Abed's flourish when he calls the group Stephen King's dream catchers. It was really <laughs> funny. He's been sitting on that for a while. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about Elroy's Irish goodbye after he pitches the nipple dipper's name and everyone sets on it. The 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 domain's still available. I like how Elroy says, "Grab that mother." To Abed right. talking about the domain. What do you think about <laughs> this moment that Elroy gets here? Do you think it's weird that he leaves at the beginning of the episode while Frankie stays? Or do you th- – I, I, alternatively – I think it I, makes sense. I want to answer my own question because part of the thing is like at the end of a school year, one by one, each friend has to go home. And then by the yeah. end, it's like the couple that are still left at the bar feeling sad. I think it works. But I would have liked a little bit more of Elroy in the episode for sure. I would have too, but I think it also makes the most sense that Elroy would be like, all right, see ya. Weird yeah, people it does. that I've known for a couple well, months. Well, he's got a job, <laughs> and this was a job yeah. for him for a semester. Yeah. I, do you like the maybe, probably, I don't know, when he leaves I and like ask if he'll be back? I like when he does it, and I think there's some emotional realism to it. I don't necessarily find Britta making fun of it super funny. but I think it's kind of funny. Well, you can do that. Zach. You can have that. That's for you, buddy. The fucking Dean. The Dean, after decidedly making the Dean not so dressy uppy that he, the second he's made it a whole semester without dressing up like anything, he just binges and purges so hard, throws on <laughs> every piece of clothing he could find, and, and just everyone is real, it's real uncomfortable. It's a it's a it's not a good moment for Greg. So they're all adjourning for the year. Frankie lets him go. Elroy's having his goodbye. And they're all heading to Britta's bar to celebrate. I, I love the way that they – it feels much like the, the the creators feeling the weight of this, the way that everyone's like, we've been doing this for six years. We're yeah. not just celebrating the end of the year. We're celebrating the end of six years, and that's a long time to do anything. Mm-hmm. Do you know, because on the, on the board, obviously, it has, like, the GC613, but what are the other, like, the in No, I didn't totally read it. I don't stuff. know. I think with a lot of these at this point, they were kind of trying to be misleading to people. I don't mm-hmm. know. The Dean falling as we cut into the theme song is really funny. It's our last cut into the theme song, but it's the first of many cuts into the cootie catcher in this episode. Yeah. So that's funny. That's, that's, that's funny. I like that they use that so many times in this episode. Mm-hmm. So now we're at Britta's bar. What's it called? The Vatican? 
The Vatican. Is that what we decided it's called? Mm-hmm. And there's not really a lot to dig into before they start riffing ideas, but it's fun to see all these characters just like hang out. It feels very mixology certification that they're just yeah. being real people in a bar that hang out after they're done with something. Um, um, Jeff calls a toast to six years of what they're doing. They all call nipple dippers. And we first notice that Annie's not here because she has an interview. What do you think of what they do with Annie's career path in this episode and how they did or didn't mention it before? Um, It's fine. I, it I didn't bother me. Too. I don't I mean, necessarily think like, wow, what a great idea for Annie. But I, it doesn't yeah. – like I buy it. Well, I mean I think when it first happened and I saw this episode, I was kind of like – the FBI, Annie works for the <laughs> FBI. But Spin now off. I've grown up. I like no people who got internships at the FBI. It's like an attainable thing. It's not this like magical corporation that barely exists. There are tons of jobs under that umbrella. So I think yeah. it makes more sense. I don't. It doesn't mean that the Annie is about to be like a, a man in black that's going to show up on crime scenes all the time. No. <laughs> So I think it works just fine. Yeah. Do you think this episode at all gets too meta on – that's such a dumb question to ask. Do you think like when they make jokes specifically about this show and what was good or bad at it, do you think they ever cross the line? No, because you kind of know what you're signing up for. If this were a regular show, I'd be like, what the fuck? Or if it were any episode other than the finale, I probably wouldn't like it as much. But because this is the finale, I think they get away with doing it a whole hell of a lot more. I really like the way that they make the conversation direct to the first pitch. And mm-hmm. I also like the way that Abed isn't exactly – he's the first one to do it but because he – because someone asked – Frankie asked, what's our formula? And Abed's the one who can explain that. But this yeah. episode does a lot of great work to show how much Abed has grown up over the last six years and how this oh is God. kind of like his thing. But he's not like obsessed with it or making anyone do it or well, he's more just like if- everyone else is being like, what if this was a show and not yeah. this is a show? Well, and I think how much he's grown, especially over the last like year and a half in this world like since Troy left Abed's had to find himself yeah in a different way and I think this is the culmination of a lot of that okay so let's unpack the first pitch for season seven well this isn't really a pitch for season seven this is more just Abed explaining how pitching works it's like just a bunch of jokes about punchline setup a story b story yeah as someone who I don't know. We're literally podcasters that talk about setups, punchlines, A stories, B stories. It's funny to watch these characters talk in the mathematical language of writing jokes. Mm -hmm. Like if you strip away all of the mad libs that make the thing a joke and just have the like bones, the, the, the machinations of what a joke would be, I think is really, really funny. Speaking of bones, just because the show's over doesn't mean that we don't want your bones. Send them in. Absurd reaction. <laughs> I love when Britta gets to do that weird physical comedy like that. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. And they made really smart usage of doing an episode that could bring back people like Shirley to have these moments without making it a, it's the last day on campus and everyone's back to say goodbye. Like mm-hmm. the, that 70 show finale or something. Yep. Uh, it, it works a lot better that it's more about how these people would like to think that in future versions of their life, that some of those friends that they've lost along the way might come back. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. Community gets a couple uh, of fuck bombs in this episode. Yeah, they do. Does that mean that we should too? Should we not censor our fucks anymore? We should get our fucks this with week. this episode. It's been a yeah. long time since we have had any. We never really needed to censor the fucks. I think it's time to let our fucks fly retroactively. I'm not censoring a goddamn fuck. <laughs> Out of this podcast. So if you've been listening for the past hour and 20 minutes and you're like, why are they not censoring fuck? It's because the Dean himself gave us permission to fuck. I mean to say fuck. The only thing censored this week will be when we, when I fucking dox Jeffrey Malone. (laughs) 
So now we get the Dean's pitch. He's like, oh, I get how this works. I'm going to show you my thoughts. And we get just a delightful run of everyone doing the hand thing that Jim Rash does along with the, the guys sitting on the trash can in the background to make it more diverse. I just think it's all really funny. You is it a trash can, Zach, or is it a tall stool? Are you just assuming it's a trash can because that's how you feel about the third black character? That he's garbage? I, I mean, if we're talking about that specific character, I don't feel a lot about him, so sure. Wow! <laughs> Too much diversity, I guess. You know who I think has a low-key great episode performance-wise this week? Who? I think Ken is so funny. Oh, yeah. He does a lot of really funny stuff in this episode. It's a stool. Jeff just takes off his shirt and stands there, <laughs> grabs the dean's hand to put it on him. And the dean, for some reason, is dressed up like Father Time. <laughs> Dan was talking in the commentary. He's like, oh, yeah, I bet you guys probably want to know why the dean's dressed up like Father Time. And honestly, I don't know. It was a thing. And he they had a costume. And it was that for a reason. But then it didn't really make it in anything. And I couldn't even remember why. So I guess he's just dressed up like <laughs> Father Time. That's so I funny. I thought it was funny. It's a little bit – this episode has shades of episodes like Paradigms of Human Memory with the mm-hmm. fake clip show episode. But it's different. It's a. It's not like look at these things we did that nobody else has seen but us. It's more like how do we think we will react to certain – I don't know. Yeah. It's, it feels – it's not, but it feels improvisational in a really satisfying way. It does. Next we get Chang's uh, uh, pitch for – how season seven doesn't need old characters like Troy and Shirley. It needs new characters like the stop motion animated Ice Cube Head. I um, think this is really funny. I think it's really funny, but I don't think I needed Justin Roiland's voice to take over this particular Dan Harmon project. It makes it too Rick it's, and Morty y. Well, and I think maybe if I have been under a rock the last, what? eight years and had never heard Justin Roiland's voice or seen Rick and Morty, it wouldn't have taken me out of it as much as it did. But it's like, oh, that's sure. Justin Roiland. He's doing a he's doing a Rick and Morty. He's doing the voice. Mm-hmm. That, I guess that is more on uh, more on me, but... Yeah. The way that <laughs> Jeff just smiles and shakes <laughs> his head while the Dean's dancing in his diaper and Ice Cube Head's like, whoa, whoa, it's the getting Dean's crazy in here. The Dean's dance is incredible. One of my favorite moments of the entire episode. I think it's so funny. So at first, Jeff is the one who is, like, not really having fun doing this improv. He's like, this is my beginning of my period of freedom from Greendale. I don't want to spend it thinking about what we'll do next time. But that starts an arc for Jeff that's going to go in a different direction. Because Annie comes in to tell everyone that she got this job. Uh, She says the FBI here. She hadn't mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. She comes to tell everyone that she got an internship for the FBI. And she's going to be in D.C. all summer. And kind of who knows what's going to happen after that. Much like Elroy, will she come back? Definitely, maybe, probably. Um, And this really triggers Jeff because, I mean, I get it. He's... I think the arc that they pull with Jeff here is really, really great. And later his speech that he gives to Annie about like how desperately he wants to be like 25 starting off at this, yeah. starting off his life again, but he's not. And as he kind of comes to terms with it's okay that people are with you for a season, not forever. I think they do a really good job. Like any other episode that we've seen before that has Jeff get like mad and the other episode where he tried to joke Abed and stuff, it always felt false for some reason. But I just think mm-hmm. Joel's performance and Jeff's characterization, it really, really feels like it's all coming to this climactic head of this is slipping through his fingers and he spent so yeah. much of it wishing it away and he's about to be the only one left, I think it's really, really, really smart writing. I think so, too. And isn't it mind-blowing, after talking to Andrew, to learn that, like, five days or whatever before the script was out, they didn't know what this was going to be about? Yeah, what the hell? Because it works incredibly. Mm Mm-hmm. So now we get Jeff's uh, kind of panic pitch for season seven where he's stuck here with a bunch of people that he doesn't like, a bunch of the, like, uh, passerbys See, of the Troy's community seat. world. Was he? Yeah, because Troy was directly across from Jeff, right? Yeah, I think it's Leonard next to Scrunch. I think that's God true. That's right. Damn that's right. it, Liz! No, it we was right. You. He was right. It was Leonard. No. Or did she say Garrett? Liz said Garrett. Liz. Liz. <laughs> 
it wouldn't be a community episode if they didn't give uh, 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 Leonard Richard Erdman <laughs> a line that isn't that hard that he makes last like 20 minutes. <laughs> His line about Pearl Harbor. There I were. think it's great. Smoke. What do you think about Scrunch being the billionaire who great. owns this place? With the bunny ears? Absolutely. Yeah. Loves I like the whole runner when they're all talking about – he says, it's our job to party and hatch harebrained schemes and get laid. <laughs> Having all these people around at a table, we've got to shout out how funny some of these people are. Eric Charles yeah. Nielsen, one of the standout – for me personally, he is my favorite like side character student, even more than like mm-hmm. Neil and some of the other favorites. It's Garrett for me. But he yeah. and David Nair, who plays Todd, is so intensely funny. Oh my god. And He's Richard so Erdman is such a legend. I, I don't know. It's great that they like I said, find excuses that work for the episode to see a lot of these characters one more time. Yeah. It's great to see a friend of the show, Darson Solomon. Darson Solomon. Darsan. Darsan. See, I always want to say Darsan, but I'm thinking in my head, well, there's a weird way that people say it, but that must be the right way. Because in my head, it's yeah. obviously Darsan or Darsan. That's what it is. Darsan, not Darsan. Yeah. Darsan Solomon, friend of the show. <laughs> we'll guy. get it right one of these days, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we get a commercial and then we get another pitch. Whose pitch is this? The cool guy, Jeff. Is this another Jeff pitch? Yes. Are you sure? Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, Jeff walks in with like a cool guy. Th- yes. This is the version where Annie's like, I can't come mm-hmm. to the FBI anymore, so I'm going to have to move back. And that's what Jeff wants. But then she gets a line. Annie gets a line that I think is phenomenal here talking about like, well, look, it's great to see you guys. But what good is it doing for me to be here still when I yeah. can be off in the FBI? I think that answers such a great question that you always have, like, six years in a, into a sitcom. Um, you mm-hmm. start to think, well, like, why are these people – I don't know. It, if they here? stick here too long, they're they're going to be the gang from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia that just can't ever escape each other. But at a point, they need to be able to – like, someone like Annie needs to do what Troy did and be able to step away and, and start her own life. And I think Jeff yeah. starting to come to some of these realizations through his imagination is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. The ass crack bandit moment where Annie gets all shy. Do you think? Do you take that as confirmation that Annie is the ass crack bandit? <sighs> Here's my thing. I have a yeah. lot of holes with Annie being the sole ass crack bandit. I will concede yeah. that she was a part of it. I don't know who she was working with, but I think that that confirms that she had something to do with it. I almost, and I'm always the guy who's like, "There's not going to be a movie. This isn't the thing. Everyone, stop thinking mm-hmm. about stuff." But I almost feel like in this case, Annie's not the ass crack bandit, but she's really turned on by the idea that it could have been anyone so people could think it's her and people could Mm. think that she's like this dangerous person. So she kind of exit on. But I don't I don't think it's her. What do you think that's going to do for her and Jeff's relationship in the movie if she's been cracking people? Do you think Jeff will like that or do you think it'll be a turn off? I think it'll be a turn on for Jeff. Yeah, me too. Mm hmm. Me too, I think, for Jeff. Yeah, Not also. For Jeff. I mean, me too, also. Yeah, me too. She can, she can crack me anytime. Britta's season seven is so funny. <laughs> Turning it into this prestige drama where, like, Greendale secedes from the U.S. and is on a barge on its own, charting the seas. They're terrorists. <laughs> I think this it's really fucking funny. fucking war. I don't think it exactly deepens anything that we know about Britta, but it's a funny exercise in what in her mind would make a good TV show. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I don't like about the Dean's I'm not a joke anymore riff is the part when he says, I'm a spokesperson for the transgender community and they're a real thing. I don't really like that one part. Of course, they're a real thing. That part Mm -hmm. seemed a little weird. But the rest of it, the I'm just transgender. I'm not all that other stuff. All that other (laughs) stuff. I think it's hilarious. (laughs) Glad to be of service, Britta. I want my diaper back. And then Frankie's like, I don't even own a TV, but I could do this better. And then she shows this is kind of like one of those jokes for people that treat television writers like sitting around writing TV isn't a job. And then you're like, yeah. OK, then you write an episode of TV and this is what they do. Mm hmm. Hello. 
or likewise with our podcast when people are like, I could do a podcast. And, and no, no, when people are like, I could do a podcast and they sit in front of a microphone and they're like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. I mean, that's us sometimes too. They literally boo and throw stuff at Frankie because they <laughs> didn't like what she did. And this is what uh, gets Abed to give one of the moments of the entire episode where he oh, just God. speaks to my heart about what TV means to me and specifically this type of TV, the comfort that it can provide, but also the importance in things being of a moment and things not lasting forever until there's nothing real about them anymore. The stuff about it needs to be okay for it to have a bad day or to phone in a day or or to get on a boat with LeVar Burton and never come back. I think all that stuff is so oh, good. That gets and me. When when Danny's voice breaks saying because eventually it all will makes me tear up every time. Yeah, that even just like watching that performance without hearing it like makes me want to tear up. I think you see in his face when Abed begins to let a little emotion out. I'm really big in my life on like things going in cycles and starting anew. So like I, I love finishing a show. I love finishing a book. I love when a series gets to its end because to me that means, okay, it's it's set out to be a purpose. It goes like literally like both my like tattoos on my arms, like that's what they're about is like things going in circles. All is like, all, baby. Continued, like literally, you know, yeah. that's the idea. So for me, that is just puts it into words so well. Like sometimes – you're going to love a show so much and it's only going to be 25 episodes and hmm. then it's gone. And then maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll be worse. Maybe it'll be better. Who knows? But thing life will move on like that. And I think that's a beautiful thing that everything just keeps going. Uh, Cause life uh, finds a way. Uh, I mean, and it's also a great parallel to what we're doing here. And as we finish community, it's it, it one thing ends and another thing begins, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's mm -hmm. sad when things ends, but it's also uh, it's powerful to let things yeah. go. And that's yes. why I'm letting you go, Stephen. This is where we uh, find out I've been uh, relieved of my duties. <laughs> yeah, effective November 1st, you've been relieved of your duties. <laughs> I imagine Danny and your mom will still uh, financially support the show, I would assume. <laughs> well, they're not um, here for me. They better. <laughs> Everyone knows that I'm the attraction here. <laughs> this leads Jeff to give his next pitch, which is the closest thing to actually feeling like what community season seven might have been right? i would have watched this i would have watched it too but isn't it also kind of like just another statement of how things are cyclical and how yeah. like yeah we'd watch this but do we need to watch this do these characters need to still be all stuck here forever just for them to make the mm -hmm. same jokes that we love or does it mean more that it ends decisively with them going different directions and maybe they will yeah. or maybe they won't cross paths again by the way, I'm a lesbian, and it's why I haven't hit on Jeff. Absolutely, that's what's in Jeff's mind. When she's like, I teach criminology, Annie. And she's like, and look, stands up showing off her outfit. I'm the <laughs> classic Annie. I'm hot, but I'm not little girl hot. And that's why it's <laughs> okay for Steven. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny, the reveal when Jeff walks in and everyone's like, Dean, Jeff, and and Lily immediately was like, what's the Dean then? And then they call Dean the Dean. <laughs> and then they make the, you've got to be in Dean class, Dean. Dean class, Dean. And the adorable way Jim Rash delivers the, well, how can I be a good Dean if I'm not around teachers? I thought it was really <laughs> funny. Co-Deans is great. And both of Chang and the Dean's reactions to this pitch, the Dean being like, in this version, do I boss you? Do you tell me what to do a lot? And Chang being like, I'm really mellow in this one. Am I on meds? <laughs> I really feel that. I like it. And I both like how now for just a second, the episode dabbles in, well, Annie thinks maybe it would be nice to just stay at Greendale and do this idea that Jeff's had. And Jeff kind of brings into reality, you should do this. I'll help you. But they don't. Yeah, take these classes. They don't like. I don't know. And like, unlike in episodes where, oh, is Annie gonna gonna uh, transfer or not? You know that it's like a fleeting, uh, just trying to keep your friends together as long as you can type thing. Um, it just feels well, like it's part of Jeff's journey. I like it. it. 
it, I like it too, and I think that it works extra well because yeah, just like, okay, you can take these classes, you can do this. And Abeb with perfect timings, like, well, now's a good time to mention like I'm moving to LA. It's I like also I, have a thing, not just Annie's going. So, yeah. and that's when Jeff gets really mad because Abed is kind of the anchor of all of this in, in yeah. just as many ways as Jeff is. And if Annie's staying but Abed's leaving, then what's the point in Annie staying? And what's mm-hmm. the point of anyone staying? Um, I want to call out the way that Abed delivers his describing the show that he's just getting like an entry level PA job in. But to see his love for television and excitement for the type of show that it is and how he sees it as so uh, uh, acutely about him. Like, it feels like the show that's tailor-made for me, and I'm going to get to write on it, and the or, or work on it, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. and how, how happy Abed is about that and how Danny delivers that brings a tear to my eye. And it also makes me think about how this show is that for so many people. Yeah. That this is that show that feels like this and this and this mixed with me somehow. And I think it's a, a really powerful moment. Well, and it also kind of makes me, like – real life happy too because I mean, we know someone i mean you're closer than i am to him but he's been on the show alex literally did that he moved to you know la and is a pa on shows and like is really working on it and like that's a step closer to him achieving Amazing. his dreams and it's so cool because like we know firsthand how much this is going to mean to abed and mm-hmm. just being that close to tv for him is is going to be so special yeah it's a really great moment, and I love it. I love that for Abed. Yeah. I mean, just plugging again our interview with Andrew Guest, getting to talk to the person that's written stuff that's made us laugh. Like, that alone is, like, such a really cool, surreal thing for me. That I'm sure, you know, you feel a To be way. closer to something that we hold so dear but always feels when you don't work in it this kind of magical otherworldly thing that it's easy to lose sight of that it's real people making it real people Mm -hmm. working on it those weird meta moment i don't know all of it just ties itself into a knot together you know yeah it's it's all connected us doing a show about tv and this being a show about tv and now abed going to i don't know it's just cool it's great warm fuzzies I like the way Abed turns around the uh, when Jeff says, but six seasons in a movie, which was a, a reaction gift for a long time when we had season six but no movie. But it's six mm-hmm. seasons in a movie. And I like how Abed turns around the, I know you like to look at things through that lens, Jeff, but that's <laughs> not how real life is. And it's so wonderful to see Abed go from – being this person that knows so much about the mechanics of television and how stories are weaved together that he can't relate to society because he's so tied up into it to gaining the emotional maturity to be able to use that as an incredible asset to go work in television, to go be a part of it because now he can separate the two life and television, but his knowledge of television makes him the perfect person to then go work in it and be a part of it. I think it's so special. Yeah, I think so, too. It's great. It makes me so happy for Abed. And then we get another uh, Imagine next season, and it's just Jeff uh, 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 strangling Abed after Abed. And I think from a uh, 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 filmmaking perspective that this scene is incredibly impressive. How many With different- all the Abeds? Yeah, how many different Dannys that there are in shot at the same time. How many of Mm -hmm. those pile of Abed that we can see Danny's face on them and then all of them at the study table and then adding more to the pile. That's one of those things that I'm not quite sure how they would do that to get this shot and to create that effect. And it looks really, really great. Yeah, I don't necessarily like like this Love it as a moment. I get it. I get why you could do with or without it. I get why Jeff is feeling that way, and Jeff has been prone to feel that way before. It doesn't bother me. I'm just saying purely from a technical aspect. Yeah, that part's I think really that cool. shot was really impressive. Because like, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how they do that to stack the bodies in that way because it doesn't look green screen, and this show doesn't have the special effects budget to make it not look... Yeah. Yeah. So it's well done. Jeff gets overwhelmed and leaves the bar, and Annie's kind of the one that notices this and that it's weird. And then uh, Chang, much like in one of the versions of himself, he farts and says, and so on. Mm-hmm. 
And then after the commercial, man, are we right into this is the end and it's going to be a ton of bricks. Just from like first we get that wide shot of that outside stoop where so many of the early important yeah. moments of community took place. Uh, cutting into to Jeff looking at the study table for the last time in the dark room. All building up to this scene with Annie that I want to dive into. I know. Well, it first, seems before like, we get that, yeah, we get the we'll cutaway where Jeff imagines that he and Annie are married and they have a kid. And even though that's kind of like his ideal future in his head, even in his head, he's starting to see the cracks in that and, and like why that's not what either of them wants and how he doesn't know what Annie wants. And that's not what it's about for him, um, I think is a cool, cool moment. It's very surreal. It's very surrealist. Yeah, I think Allison Brie does an incredible job uh, acting wise in this like the back half of, of this episode, she is so good. Yeah, she does a really good job. Okay, we are not Jeff and Annie shippers. We have made that clear time and time and time again. And yet this scene between the two of them, and a lot of it goes to how well they perform the shit out of it, my heart is in this. And I feel their desire for each other, and I feel the weight that they both know that they've missed any chance at this point of doing anything about that. And now it's time for them to go separate ways and think of it as a thing that could have been, but wasn't, I think it is really powerful how they, how they do it in the scene, whether you ship them or not, it's so clear throughout the show that there is like their flirty attraction or whatever. So for them to address it in this big way in this final way for them to have a kiss that, uh, Dan talks about it on the commentary that the goodbye kiss can be so much more powerful than a romantic or a sexual kiss because there's, there's just all this weight of, I don't know, like the thousands of kisses that weren't behind this one kiss. I don't know. What do you think about all this? It works for me. I don't definitely like it don't That's like okay. it as much as you do. That's um, fine. The first time I watched it, I especially was like, why? Second time I got it a little bit more. In terms of like, I here's what I like about this scene. Yeah, I like where Jeff is like. I understand that he's saying, you know, I put away these feelings for you because it's inappropriate. She's saying the same thing. I like how Annie has grown past her feelings for Jeff. I don't like when Jeff is like, I let you go from my hands, my heart, my mind. That whole thing. That's I think a little that's corny. A little I get that. Sure. Dramatic. Because he never, like, had to her to let go. Like, he could say he let go of her feelings for her. I understand that. But also, like, Jeff never wanted to, like, date Annie or really be with her. I think he found her attractive and was attracted to the fact that she was attracted to him. But I don't think this... I don't want to say it's not earned, because it is... I It just doesn't do all that for me. I don't, I don't hate it. Let I don't love it. Let me say this. I think it has a lot more to do, and I think we've been in situations like this where we are attracted to someone and have like a – like we do this. We play this game with each other every mm -hmm. day. We do. Um, I think there is that – that Jeff is this confident guy. He has this thing with Annie, and maybe in his head all this time, he's been imagining that one day when they like have a mm -hmm. kid and stuff just because it feels and looks nice. And this is like a in real time, he's – he. He never really got a chance to grapple with those feelings, and now he never does. And it's less about losing Annie and more about I never said anything, and now it's done. And yeah, like I, we've all had, I I have definitely had romantic encounters with people that came and went very fast, and then you're mm -hmm. left wistfully thinking about them for a long time. This yeah. is happening in real time for Jeff and Annie, and they're able to have th this conversation about it with each other that most people don't get to have with the person mm -hmm. that they feel that way about. And I think the kiss works really well. I love when Annie – I love that Annie's in charge in this in this yes. moment. That me she too. says, I think you should kiss me or else you're going to regret it. And I love the cheeky response when Jeff says, what about you? And Annie's Annie, who very clearly does want to kiss Jeff in this moment, is mm -hmm. like, who, me? What do I care? I'm in my 20s. I'll regret it for a week. Who cares? Yeah. I think is an adorable moment. And then 
The moment when they kiss, I think, is acted so well by the both of them. Just look at the look that Annie gives to Jeff as they lean in for a kiss. The, it, it, I feel like it's very powerful. It's more powerful than I would say any well, kiss Well, and I like it because it's show. not a romantic kiss. It's not no. like a tongue French makeout. It's not that at all. It is like a goodbye kiss. And I think that is where the scene saves itself for me. Because it is that. It's a different That's why it works for me. Thing. And mm-hmm. I think at the same time, for all the people that love Jeff and Annie, like I said earlier, I think if anything, this puts a pin in it for now so they can grow up on their own. And I think doing that growing on their own could be what you brings mean, so them the, So the Jeff Annie shippers can movie. grow the fuck up on their own and get over it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the movie is definitely... I don't know... I don't know what to expect as far as a relationship, but there's no way that they don't address this at some point in the movie. And I think if they haven't seen each other in 10 years and they all have to get back together for some reason and that attraction redevelops, I could see them building a more likely relationship off of that because they've got this built history together. I don't know. It's because she's not Who dressed up you, like a baby Zach? anymore. You want, you want Jeff Annie shit in the movie? It's more of... I know it's going to happen whether I want it or not. And this episode, more than just about anything, set up some interesting emotional dynamics between the two that I would be interested in seeing what happens next. That's it's all. just a little bit pandery. Pandering. Pander. It's pandering. And in a series finale of a show like Community that has such passionate fans that are so invested in these flirt mances, I think it's okay to be a little pandery. And in fact, I think it's worth bit. celebrating that they did it so well. We can put a pin in that. Uh, anything else you want to say about Jeff Annie before we move on? Look no. at the kiss. Look at the way Annie looks at him. You're going to the other side. You owe Tim Tam an apology. I don't owe Tim Tam a goddamned thing. <laughs> I've told you never to speak that name anymore. I think while Tim we make Tam love. listens but doesn't like email anymore and just sees. He's collecting receipts. And then we just get a really cute moment. Um, you could say that this moment is pandry, where now everyone's in the room and they get to have this big group hug as they they make well, a I couple like more jokes. Scene. And I do too. It's a type of pandering that I think works really well. Love the cool, cool, cool. For cool, each cool, cool. season, and then Chang. Wait, do that again. I want to try something. I think what makes this moment funny is how Ken delivers it. Yeah. I don't think I don't really want to trash on. Season well, you four know, anymore. I don't. I'm not a pee pee poo poo fart joke guy, but I like <laughs> this pee pee poo poo fart joke. Who are we anymore? I want Jeff and Annie to fuck, and you want to be covered head to toe in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the growth we've done over the last two and a half years. Yeah. This moment's a little bit corny when Frankie suggests they all close their eyes and imagine season seven, but I'll give it to them because Mm -hmm. it's so delightful to watch them all react in the way that they do, to smile at the same things. This is like a version... I can't help but smile. It's like a version of that moment when they're all trying to get the computer to feel emotions in season five, except it actually works here for me. Mm Mm-hmm. A very funny yeah. misdirect when it does cut to Jeff's version and he redoes the pilot, I pronounce you a community line, and you think, I don't know, you think it's going to be something more heartfelt than what it is, but it's just a joke of how Jeff is coming to terms <laughs> with it won't be the worst thing to be a guy in his 40s who's single and works at this school and could maybe get laid a bunch. I think it's yeah. I think without having a big dramatic conclusion to who Jeff is as a person, I think they do very well showing how Jeff has settled into this position here and what it means to him and how it can yeah. be a better thing than he thought it would be with or without all of the original people. <laughs> when he's like, I'm yeah. sort of a hero in that way. I can I can <laughs> handle stuff now. So we can cut to them at home, right? By ourselves? <laughs> I thought that line was funny. A little sleazy, but pretty funny. Uh, I did. Okay. So, so far, there have been two things that have made me cry or have made me close to cry. It, it's when Jeff or it's when Abed gets emotional talking about TV. It's when Abed has his and part me moment talking about the TV show he's working on. Mm-hmm. I do get welled up at the goodbye-ness of the Jeff and Annie scene. Then number four is here. Jeff's I love you guys. You saved Dang. my life and changed it that, forever. That would get you. Uh, th- here's I, what i say I, yeah. i'm okay with the 
with the gaze that, that Chang does. We talked about how that's not a funny thing to do anymore, but we also have talked about how we were in the prime age where everyone was yelling that every 10 seconds. I think so it's funny because it's Chang. One. He's not making fun of gay yeah. people. It's the same as earlier in the episode when he's like, Obama, Chang. Yeah, like he this, just yells random I, stuff. I think it works for me until they're in the group hug. We're not there yet. This moment here with Jeff makes me damn near cry. I love this moment. The reason why I think the Chang moment works in the group hug is because Chang's like similar to in the wedding videography episode when he's like, I did this. This is about me. He's like, we're <laughs> all having these big moments. Everybody's leaving. It's now my turn at the height of this to say what my thing is. And everyone just kind of disregards it because they're in the heat of the love of the moment other than the Dean who's like, oh, you're gay. I don't know. I think it works. <laughs> and I'll be very interested to see what, if anything, they do with that in the movie. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they just don't do anything with it. I think it works. Because it's it wouldn't be community, even though maybe it should have been, it wouldn't be community for them to just have the emotional beat. They had to put a joke in there, too. Yeah. But it does truly end with an emotional beat. Now, this beat. is what makes me cry, Zach. Yep is after that when they're saying the goodbyes not the goodbye to annie but when he when they're at the airport abed letting annie twice. and abed go yes the way he hugs abed it it has shades of when abed hugs troy and really realizes what troy's meant to him mm -hmm. as troy's about to leave when jeff like even though he's like the the man and he's the one who everyone looks to for guidance he looks to abed for a lot of guidance and to be a rock in his life and I don't know, it, whoever whoever emailed us the, I see your value now, this is a perfect mm -hmm. mirroring of that moment that does make me a little bit emotional. They, well, they have some value Well, we've talked in the very first other. episode of our show, Zach, about how this show is, there are a lot of relationships that kind of have the guise of, okay, these are the connections, but Jeff and Abed have always been the, the true closest friendship from episode one onward. With and highs and lows. that's just such an emotional ending to it it's really really well acted by the both of them and i really like that the series before the end tag ends with the study group that is left the members that are left coming together at the bar for a drink and just chatting as we fade out of the series and the mm -hmm. last thing you really hear is britta saying now this is the show as the friends have a good time together yeah. i love that I, that I think it's we, so you good. talk about cyclical, you talk about everything keeps going on. It shows us that these these people go to the bar th that night. They they come back to work the next year. Everything continues to go, but things are different, and they're all better because of each other. And the ones that have left will stick with them. I don't know. It it really really works for me in every way. Yeah, and I I. I, ha I was filled with so much emotion when the and a movie popped up, Zach, because like because now it's, it's happening. real now. Yeah, it's real. And for how many years were oh. we like, oh, yeah, and a movie, like, maybe probably saying not. it, yeah. but knowing that sure, what the fuck, you know, but the fact that it's really here and happening just fills me with a lot of emotion and a lot of happiness and a lot of like just joy. It's like Abed said earlier on, it's like, you know, whatever season seven is going to be, it just has to be joyful. And I think that I just feel a lot of joy right now. And I think – I do too, Stephen, for a lot of reasons. And I think the movie, regardless of what it is, is going to bring me a lot of joy to see these characters yeah. again. And I am so grateful that all of these people still want to return and to do this for us again. And I am so grateful for the teensy, tiny part that we've gotten to have in it over the last couple years. And over yeah. the next couple years as the movie produces and comes out – it's all very meta. It's all very community. I love it. Before we get a little bit sappy and wrap this thing up, let's talk about this bonkers end tag. <laughs> I would full stop play the shit out of the community board game. Oh, yeah. I think that'd be a blast. I think I'm they sure you win. can buy it on Etsy or something, right? I think they went oh, – well, yeah, people have made the Hawkthorn video game. Some fan uh -huh. needs to make a playable version of this game. And it's just one last chance for the art department to show how A++++ they are. All kinds of jokes. The snow globe thing, do you get what that's a reference to? 
There was a TV show called Saint Elsewhere, and in the series finale, mm-hmm. it zooms out, and the show took place within a snow globe in the snow entire globe. time. Yeah. So that's what this is a reference to. It basically just pulls the conceptual rug out from under us, saying, this is a show. None of these people are real. You're stupid for caring about them, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Yeah. What do you take away from this? I think it's funny. I think it's the perfect... It's very Dan Harmon. It's very community. Yeah. It's Incredibly very, Incredibly like, Dan Harmon. It reminds me so much of uh, the first time that they did, like, the NBC in tags. Right. It reminds me a lot of that, and I think it's it's equally as funny. It's it's just so good. Do you think it undoes the emotional resonance that the real feelings that we have for these characters that they do so well in this episode? Do you think it undoes any of that by kind of laughing in our face for caring about it? I don't think so at all. I think that and I don't for think me, they're it laughing didn't in hurt our it. face either because the Cause Dan I Harmon's... love going from I'm crying to I'm laughing. That's true. Or even better what this show does, and we've talked about this a lot about we both love this a lot, but when we can go from laughing to crying to laughing again, that's, that's the perfect combo for me. I love all the little details, though, in his speech about, like, show canceled by network because of outdated system where people keep a journal of what they watch uh, being moved mm-hmm. to the television, where being moved to the internet, where it turns out tens of millions were watching the whole time. Uh, I don't yeah. think tens of millions of people were watching Community on Yahoo screen, personally. But nice try, no. Dan. <laughs> I hope they were. That's great if they were. <laughs> but I don't remember there being a ton of advertisement for communities yahoo screen season if you weren't already like, well looking and i for think it. what he was saying there zach is not that that many people watched on yahoo screen but that many people were watching on nbc the whole time or were going back and watching on Hulu. but because of the you know, antiquated way of deciding what stays and what gets canned it didn't matter which is very do they very still dumb. use the fucking whatever the the, the nielsen system nielsen the nielsen do they still use that i think they do but n- Network television uh, doesn't can matter be a anymore. Nielsen home? Yeah. And I think uh, shows get abysmal ratings nowadays. I mean, there are ones that still succeed, mm-hmm. but it has a lot more to do with what's being talked about on Twitter, what's being streamed on Hulu the next day, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. My only issue with it is very, very funny, and it's only because I've watched it a hundred times because I'm starting to feel like you nailed the emotional resonance of this ending, and then Dan kind of made it about himself at the end. And that makes Uh me a little sad because that's just kind of the type of stuff I don't really love out of Dan Harmon. Regardless of how funny and and, and creative this joke is. Well, but I also think it's also a very Dan Harmon thing to do is to have this big – this show that so many people have put so much time in at the end. He's like, by the way, this is mine. This is what I do. This is how I feel right now in this moment. That's that's the most Dan Harmon thing you can do. I think with that, that's all I've got to say about the end tag. And, man, we're getting so close to the end of this. Let's talk about, for the last time, our MVP wow. for an episode of Community. Um, I'll go first. And this um, might be the hardest one. It is really one hard. One of the hardest ones. It's really hard. I'm going to give... <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. I. It is really hard. And I know who it's going to be. But I could mention a lot of people as honorable mentions that deserve it just as much. Honestly, everyone from Frankie yeah. to Chang to the Dean that all have incredible moments. Uh, uh, but my biggest honorable mentions go to Annie and mm-hmm. Jeff. Mm-hmm. My MVP's Abed. Purely nice. because of how he speaks to what television means to me in this episode in a way that makes so much sense for the character and in a way that explains things about myself better than I've ever been able to explain. I think Danny just shines here. Mm-hmm. It, it's Abed for me. This one's so hard for me. It I'm going to give hard. honorable mentions. Um, I think Frankie's great this episode. I think that Gillian Jacobs does a tremendous job of acting out all the different uh, narrators. I think that Allison Brie is a great episode. Chang's fantastic. The whole cast is great. For me, it really boils down to to Jeff and Abed. And I think that my biggest emotional moments of the episode are Abed. But I gave my MVP to Jeff because I truly think this is probably the most I've ever liked Jeff. And... 
we have talked many times about how much Jeff can be a douchebag, all these things. How much we love is... Joel and how he plays yeah. Jeff, but how unlikable the character can be sometimes. And this is the first time that I think Jeff has not only grown up, but has accepted that it's okay to be where he is in life without yeah. ulterior motive. And I think that warrants him the MVP for me this episode. It's a great, great. episode. I'll bet there's well said. at least five people that are deserving of <laughs> yeah. MVP quality performances this episode. Maybe maybe seven. You know, I think I think it's just really good. It's just really good. And it makes me so happy to get to talk about such an incredible performance from so many people and and we're spoiled with the fact Mm -hmm. that you know even this far into the show in a season where halfway through it i was like oof what are we still doing here (laughs) yeah yeah but i'm i'm really happy that i waited first of all i'm I'm happy i waited to watch this episode until now because how meaningful is it now that you've watched it for the first time with all of this extra personalization towards yourself i don't know you know Mm -hmm. what i mean that it's a big deal to watch it like this it's a really big deal. It's too bad that we couldn't have been in the same room to watch it together. That would have been really mm-hmm. special. Oh, I was... I, <laughs> that's where you're wrong. Go I ahead. Really, open up the closet door, Zach. Let me out. I'm starting to get a little teary and, and joyful and emotional about how close we are to wrapping this episode and this phase mm-hmm. of podcasting up. I hope, I pray, that no matter what we get to do as far as interviewing or being a part of the release of the community movie i hope that we get to watch it together yeah me too i hope we I, get to I was watch it i've been having the exact same thought okay so that wraps up our discussion on emotional consequences of broadcast television and that wraps up our episode by episode discussion of community man i don't know what to say um this has been awesome <laughs> um What started is something I've always wanted to do just as a thing with my friend and what started as a great way for us to reconnect with each other in this way has become one of, if not the thing I'm most proud of in my life. And, and I, I don't know. I I'm very happy that we do this together. I'm very happy that I do it with you. I'm very, very happy that people have found us and have enjoyed listening to us, man. I don't know. Going from me having a corner in my room to podcast out of, not owning a computer, buying a computer so we could record the first episode, (laughs) to now, it's been a journey, and it's been fun, and I think we have come so far, and I am emotional and uh, feel very bittersweet about this coming to an end, but I also feel like we have so much more to do, whether it's the next show that we're going to talk about or just that I have fun doing this with you and I hope we have reasons to riff off of each other for a long time. Um, I, I'm kind of at a loss of how to wrap this up. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm just I'm just so grateful, Zach, to everyone who's listened or shared the podcast or told somebody about it or liked a tweet or anything. You know, I think it just... Like you said, we just started this because we wanted to. I wanted to talk to my friend about community, and we had talked since high school about doing a podcast together, like as a joke. And now yeah. we just wrapped. We're the second second ever podcast to go through every episode one at a time like mm-hmm. this. I think mm-hmm. sharing that with you is just such a special thing, and and it just makes Thanks. me really happy that that we're friends and that we've gotten to go through this and through different stages in our lives and seeing each other. Yeah. You know at our happiest at our lowest and 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 i wouldn't want to be doing this with anybody else buddy so it makes me really happy that's so because yes at our like how danny said about this being a consistent for her that goes a million for me at my mm-hmm. highest at my lowest for the last two and a half years every week i've gotten to sit down with my best friend and talk about a show that i love and even yeah. when i don't feel like making silly my inner baby jokes i watch the show i laugh <laughs> i get on a zoom with you i laugh and it's a good day yeah. and i that 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 we can do that for anyone else is really special to me and i want people to know that every message that's been sent to us ever on DM, on Twitter, on email. Yeah. We read all of that and it makes me, and I'm sure Steve and I speak for both of us, it mm-hmm. makes us feel so seen and it's so yeah. special. 
And it's been so positive and it's been such a positive outlet for me. And I'm just so grateful and I'm going to stop rambling. I, I, I love this. I love you, Stephen. And I love everybody love you, that has come along on this journey with us. Anything yeah. else you want to say before we wrap this bad boy up? I think I think it's been said. Yeah, man. This has been so much fun. Yeah. Okay, well, before we wrap this thing up, I want to uh I want to Jesus. <laughs> I want to <laughs> I want to What do I want to do? What do I want to say? I want to plug our Patreon. I want mm-hmm. everyone to check us out over at patreon.com/can'tdisappointpodcast. Um over there, we're going to keep things going as we wrap up this podcast over the next couple months. Lots of bonus content to find there and tons more are still coming. Please support us if you like what we've done here. Patreon.com slash Can't Disappoint Podcast. Uh, I also want to shout out that today, when this podcast drops, is the last day for you to vote for the next podcast we'll be doing after Community. So stay tuned next week on our Season 6 Roundtable to learn officially what show we're doing next. And then we've got to start a whole other... We can't cry about this. We've got to think about <laughs> our next podcast and what the fuck it's going to be called There's and what more the fuck it's going to be. podcasts to make! So... Follow us on Twitter at You Can't Disappod to keep up with that and if you still have a chance to give a vote. And the last thing before Steven gives us the social media rundown, I want to shout out for the last time that all October we've been calling out for you to send us some top five lists of your favorite episodes and moments from community to be a part of our final run of podcasts here on You Can't Disappoint a Podcast, our community superlative podcast. I'm going to plug those lists one more time. One last time. Send us in (laughs) your top five homage episodes, your top five underrated episodes, your top five golden era seasons one through three episodes, your top five silver era seasons four through six episodes, Top five plot lines we would have liked to see, top five community songs, and top five must haves for the community movie. Send in your list to us via email, voice message, video, whatever you want. Send it via uh, what else? How can they send it to us? Telegram. You can etch it on a bone. Send us send us bone. a bone etched you can with put it your on a dirigible. version of these lists by the end of October. To can't disappoint podcast at gmail.com and we'll feature you, which we would love to feature as many of you as we can in those last episodes. Mm-hmm. Steven, now you can tune back in. I'm done talking. Where else can the people find us? <laughs> uh, great point, Zach. I, I, yeah, come on over to that Patreon. Uh, you can find us over on Twitter over at you can't disappoint. We're also on Instagram under the name can't disappoint podcast, and then you know where to find us. If you want to get real down and dirty. Hop on over to the Metaverse and add us on Facebook and YouTube under the whole name of the show. You can't disappoint a podcast. We've got an awesome roundtable coming out next week. I'll plug uh, that right here. If you join us on Patreon, October 29th, the evening of Saturday, October 29th, we're going to live stream as we record our Season 6 roundtable with our community podcaster guests, some great guests for that. So if you join our Patreon, you can watch us record that live, and we'll – Before we go live for the roundtable, we're going to do a special evening time live You Can't Disappree show to play Jackbox games with a bunch of community friends. And we'd love if you are a part of our Patreon and join us to play some games that night. Go ahead, Steven. Yeah, come play with us. Please. Did you say all the things? Not Little Girl Hot. Facebook, YouTube? Do you got all that stuff left? Did you say Facebook and YouTube? I wasn't listening. LinkedIn, okay. I said Facebook and YouTube. Well, we've done it. We've done it, Stephen. We have truly done it, and I think it, I'm proud of us. And I think it's okay to be proud of us for yeah, this as we too. wrap it up. Everyone, it's been a pleasure. From inside the Dreamatorium, Black Lives Matter, I'm Zach. I'm Stephen. And six seasons in a movie. Six seasons in a movie. To the end, to the end, would you follow me? There's a world that was meant for us. Hi, before we get started with the episode, 
we just wanted to point you in the direction of the social accounts we've set up for the show to help you guys engage with us and communicate and get involved with our show. You can email us at can'tdisappointpodcast at gmail.com. Emailing us will really be the best way to talk to us directly and conversate with us on air during the show. Also, be sure to like You Can't Disappoint a Podcast on Facebook. And you can also follow us on Instagram at Can't Disappoint Podcast and Twitter at You Can't Disappod. That's Disappod like Disappoint. So there's one S and two P's. Well, thanks for tuning in and let's kick off the episode. Here we go. (laughs) 